Hello everyone. Welcome to the season 2 movie of What If Goku Trained Deku. It's pretty freaking wild that we reached a season 2 and I hope you all enjoy, if you want me to. Consider a third season, like, comment, and subscribe for more. What is up everyone? Welcome to part 8 of the series, What If Goku Trained Deku. We have made it to season 2 of the story so I hope you all enjoy. If any of you do enjoy the series, then make sure to like, subscribe, and press on the bell notification bell for more of the series to be posted in the future. So make sure you do all of that. I hope you all enjoy the video. And have a good day. It was the day after the USJ attack. Principal Nezu had to close down the school for a short time so the police could do their investigation freely. All Might and Detective Tsukachi talked and they know that it has something to do with all for one. Izuku teleports to Bakugo's house using instant transmission. What the fuck Deku? Don't fucking pop up on me like that or else I'll blow you up. Yo bro, I'm flattered but I don't swing that way. Izuku said sarcastically, annoying the blonde barking chihuahua. Shut the fuck up Deku. Well what the hell are you doing here anyways? Bakugo asked, forgetting about what he asked for. It seemed like Bakugo forgot so Izuku reminded him. Did you forget? I told you the next time we have a day off, we will train. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. How in the hell did I forget about that? Anyways Kachin, we will be training in the time chamber. We will be training for a year in a day. Out of all the stupid, crazy shit you said, that has to be the most dumbest fucking thing I have ever heard in my goddamn life. Do you really expect me to believe that we will be training for a year in a day? And what the fuck is a time chamber? You better not do some freaky shit to me Deku. First of all, you've been saying the sus stuff, not me, and second of all, you'll see so let's get going. All Might and Aizawa Sensei are going to be joining in as well. Don't tell me what to do Deku. I'll go when I want. Alright then, are you ready to go now? Fine, fuck it. Bakugo grabs onto Izuku and they teleport to the lookout to see Goku, All Might, and Aizawa. So is that the guy you've been talking about Deku? He doesn't look so strong. That's when Goku teleported right behind Bakugo, scaring the boy. I think I'm pretty strong, but I could always get stronger. So why do you want to get stronger? Well 1, I want to beat Deku's ass, and 2, I want to be strong so I can save people, just like All Might. Hearing this made Goku and the heroes smile. You aren't doing anything to my ass Kachin. My cheeks are staying closed. Shut up with your stupid jokes. I don't swing that way. Yeah, sure, whatever you say. God fucking damn it Deku. I'm going to kill you. Get over here. Bakugo chases Izuku around, trying to catch the boy. Izuku runs away from Bakugo while teasing him. You can't catch me. Izuku says as he sticks his tongue out at the boy, teasing him. Bakugo gets angry and uses his explosions to boost his speed. That's it Deku, you're going to die. A realization just hit the eraser hero. They are on a floating building in the sky and they are going to train for a whole year in a day. I can't believe there's a floating building just chilling somewhere in the sky. Crazy stuff has been happening but nothing as crazy as being on a floating building with a thing called a time chamber to train in for a whole entire year in a day. Will we age there? Goku tells Aizawa, Kami told me that we won't age, but we need to bring our own food, but All Might already brought the food. Bakugo isn't buying any of this for a second. So he says, nah bro, y'all can't really expect me to believe in all that bullshit. Bro, you're literally seeing the proof for yourself. If you don't believe it, then look at the edge of the building yourself and see. Hell, go inside the time chamber and see for yourself. Bakugo looks at the edge of the lookout to see that it is actually a floating building in the sky, which surprised the explosive blonde. What the fuck? How is this shit possible? Don't ask me bro. Everything will be weird if you're hanging out with us. Goku grabs everyone's attention. Alright guys, let's go train for a year. And Bakugo, I will help you catch up and I will push you beyond your limits. Are you ready? Yeah I'm ready. I'm going to get stronger, surpass Deku, and become the number one hero. Goku smiles at the explosive blonde's determination. Before Izuku heads into the time chamber, he texts Momo and tells her that he won't be able to answer the phone for the next 24 hours due to his training. They all head into the time chamber. Aizawa and Bakugo were shocked. Their day has been nothing but surprises but seeing this is just too surreal for anybody. The two feel the heavy gravity and are having a very hard time moving around while Goku, All Might, and Izuku are walking around with ease. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. It's like an infinite void. Aizawa has so many questions but whatever answer he gets, he knows that it still won't make any sense for him. Goku would show the power Bakugo and Aizawa will be working towards. He transforms into a Super Saiyan, 2, 3, God, Blue, and Ultra Instinct. Seeing the power shocks and impresses the two. The hero and the student are left in awestruck, but it doesn't deter them. Everyone is training hard. Bakugo, Izuku, Aizawa, Goku, and All Might fight each other every day. There are times when Goku, All Might, and Izuku want to goof off so they can have some rest from time to time and just have a little bit of fun, but Aizawa and Bakugo stay serious and keep on the grind. 
After being demolished by the Nama, All Might would take the time to learn energy-based attacks and movesets so if he ever needs to, he will be prepared. Bakugo and Aizawa would also learn Kai control. Izuku would try to explain how Kai works. Aizawa is getting it but Bakugo is having a hard time because of his rambunctious personality but that isn't going to deter him. The only thing that does deter him though is meditation but Izuku would make Bakugo go through it because it is an important part of learning Kai. Izuku would explain to Bakugo, being strong physically is great, don't get me wrong, but you also need to strengthen your mind too. Learning Kai takes precise control when you're starting from scratch. It's the life force within everyone, and meditation will help you control that awesome power you have within yourself. Aizawa understands the lesson. The student becomes the teacher and the teacher becomes the student. While Bakugo learns Kai control, he would want to create his own techniques so he doesn't become a carbon copy of Goku. He would learn some of the techniques from Goku's arsenal, but he wouldn't use them too much so he could be his own hero. Aizawa is a different case. He would want to learn everything because all the techniques in Goku's arsenal would be useful for him as an underground hero. He especially likes the idea of instant transmission so he could teleport to his enemies and subdue them without them even realizing what's going on. The Eraser hero even takes an interest in the power multiplying technique. The Kaioken. Goku would teach Aizawa and Bakugo his martial arts prowess. Aizawa was already pretty skilled but learning a new fighting style would prove beneficial. Eventually, the year came to an end. With no more food, they had to leave the time chamber. Everyone there became stronger than ever before. All Might would be at a power level around 2 million and can use the Kaioken up to around 30 times. Izuku would be around 1.6 million and could use the Kaioken up to 7 times with one for all without obliterating his body. Aizawa and Bakugo would be around 700k. Aizawa could use the Kaioken up to 9 times. He could only go up to times 9 due to his naturally small frame and size. The reason for these power levels are due to the fact that Izuku and All Might were already pretty strong before heading into the chamber. Aizawa and Bakugo were pushed beyond their limits and had to train way harder than All Might and Izuku first did. When they came out, everyone became stronger than ever before. All the hard work they did paid off. All Might asks everyone, Hey guys, do you guys want to go out to eat? That was one hell of a year. When Goku hears that question, he runs up to All Might and says, Yes please, tell me where, I'm down for that. Izuku said. Aizawa responds and says, Sorry guys but I do have things to do and I need to go. I still have a job to do after all. Bakugo straight up refuses and flies away. Aizawa tells Goku, Izuku, and All Might, well, I'll see you guys later. I'll join you guys for training more often. And Midoriya, make sure you're ready for the sports festival. I'll be announcing it to the rest of the class tomorrow. Alright Aizawa-sensei, I'll see you tomorrow. Aizawa flies away so he can get back to his duties. Well guys, what would you like to eat? It's on me. Can we eat ramen? Goku asks eagerly. Yeah sure thing. Ramen would be great. They all go out and eat some ramen, having a good time. Goku keeps going from bowl to bowl and when All Might sees the bill, his face shows extreme shock, but he still pays for it because the hero is extremely rich. The next day, Inko heard a knock on the door to see that it's Momo. Mama Midoriya gets excited to see the girl and invites her in. Hello sweetie, come on in. How are you doing? Hi there, I came over to head to school with Izuku. So you wanted some personal time with my son huh? The mother asked eagerly. Momo gets flustered and red. Well, to be honest, yes. Well sweetie, I was going to give this to Izuku, but here, you hold on to this. Inko gives Momo a pack of condoms. When the young girl realized what it was, she started freaking out and getting all giddy. You kids are growing up so fast, but it's better to be safe than sorry. I don't want any grandkids anytime soon. Momo temporarily passes out from embarrassment. And Ko tells the girl, you should tell him about your feelings soon because my son is clueless when it comes to these things. He may be more confident but he is still clueless. Izuku walks into the living room, ready to leave for school, to see that Momo is in his house and talking to his mom. Oh hey Momo, it's great to see you. What are you doing here? I usually teleport to you. While still flustered and nervous, the girl tells the boy, well, I wanted to go with you to school and I thought it would be fair if I came to you this time. That's sweet. Let's go. I'll let you sit on my back and I'll fly us to school. Momo gets excited and is eager to hop on. When the two leave, Mama Midoriya starts tearing up. My baby boy is becoming a man day by day. I'm so proud to have a son like him. Everyone heads into class. The students were talking about the USJ incident and were wondering what happened when Izuku teleported away after saving them. When Bakugo walks in, everyone notices how buff he has gotten in such a short time frame. 
They try to ask him how he got so ripped but the blonde just tells everyone to shut the fuck up. Aizawa walks into the class afterwards. Everyone sees how buff he's gotten too but he quickly shuts them down so he can make his announcement. Alright class, I'm here to announce that you all will be participating in the UA Sports Festival. Some students in the class were happy to hear this while there were others that had concerns. That's when Kayoka Gyro asks the Eraser Hero. Don't you think it is too soon to have the sports festival after being attacked by villains? Well, the administration believes that continuing the sports festival is the best way to show that the threat has been dealt with. Also, security will be beefed up compared to prior years. This event provides a huge opportunity for UA and its students, so we can't just cancel it. Aizawa dismisses the class. By lunchtime, Izuku, Yuraka, Ida, and Momo were hanging out. That's when All Might appears out of nowhere and shouts, Young Midoriya, would you like to join me for lunch? I brought some extra food for you. Izuku looks at his friends and they give him the nod of approval. Izuku heads towards the room where All Might is at to see Goku eating there also. Oh hey Izuku, nice to see you again. You have to try these onajiris, they are very delicious. Don't eat all of them like you did our sandwiches. But they are so yummy though, Goku says with a frown on his face. All Might sighs and pulls out some extra food, knowing something like this would happen. Izuku laughs at Goku's antics, finding it enjoyable. What is up everyone? Welcome to part 9 of What If Goku Trained Deku. This series has been coming so far. If any of you have been enjoying the videos then please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for more videos in the future. I hope you all enjoy and have a great time. Class 1A was trying to leave the classroom but they were blocked by other students. Yuraka asks the crowd, Why are you all here? Ada chimes in and asks, Do you all have some sort of business with us? That's when Bakugo starts walking towards the exit and says, They are scouting out the competition you idiots. We survived a villain attack and they want to see us with their own eyes. Now you all see what future heroes look like. Now get out of my way you extras. I have training to do. After that announcement, Hitoshi Shinzo appears. This is class 1A huh? I heard that one of you was pretty impressive but you just sound like an ass. Didn't only one of you actually do anything during the USJ? What happened to the rest of you? Oh yeah, you future heroes had to be saved by that green-haired kid. Yeah, we heard the rumors. Bakugo gets pissed but he collects himself. Yeah, you're right. We had to rely on that stupid Deku to save us, but that isn't the case anymore. Alright, sure thing. Whatever you say. Just so you know, I'm making a declaration of war. I will be coming for your seat in Class 1A. After Shinzo's declaration, Bakugo just decides to walk away, not giving him or any of the other students any more of his attention. That's when Tetsu Tetsu comes on by and starts ranting. When Bakugo was about to walk out the door, Kirishima said, Yo Bakugo, where are you going? They are just disrespecting you at this point. You have to say something. No I don't. These rejects aren't even a threat to me. I can sense their power and it's pretty pathetic. Maybe if they train then I'll consider them as an obstacle. But from what I can see, they won't even be able to touch me at all. Bakugo speed blitzes away, surprising everyone. Izuku had a feeling that his childhood friend would say something like that. He is pumped up and is excited to see what will happen. It is the day of the sports festival. Class 1A is hanging out at the waiting room. Izuku is just having a chat with Momo but that's until Todoroki walks up to the green-haired boy. Yo, what's up Todoroki? Why are you giving me that look? Do I have something on my face or am I just that attractive? Huh, what? And, oh, I wanted to say that I am going to beat you in the sports festival, even if you have all might in your corner. I won't pry into your business but so you know, I'm going to beat you. Todoroki was about to walk off but he stopped himself when Izuku started talking. You already know about my relationship with All Might. We train together. That isn't all Midoriya. I notice how close you are with him. He even invited you to have lunch with him. Momo chimes into the conversation and says, Yeah, I'm not sure why you're telling everyone that you guys are just training partners. We even celebrated your passing of the entrance exams, even though you guys celebrated that very same day. All Might even took us out to eat at a restaurant of your choosing. Heck, you, Goku, and All Might are practically like family. Hearing this has the rest of the class in shock, even surprising Bakugo. He trained with them for a whole year and knows they are close but he didn't consider their relationship to be similar to a family of sorts. Yeah, that is true, Izuku said nervously. Hearing that statement from Momo adds to his drive to beat Izuku and was about to walk away but was stopped when Izuku told him this. Hey Todoroki, before you go, just so you know, you won't win, especially if you only use half your strength. So if you want me to consider taking you seriously, then you should go all out. If you don't, then I won't bother with you. Oh yeah, what do you know? 
Todoroki asked with a dark glance and an annoyed tone. I know a lot of things, Todoroki. Even the fact that you will not win against me, especially if you only use half your power, so if you want a chance of winning, don't hold back. This pisses off the bi-colored boy. Hiroshima tries to cool off the drama and puts his hand on Todoroki's shoulder, but the edgelord smacks it off and storms off. The whole room went quiet besides Bakugo, who looked visibly annoyed because no one is challenging him or views him as a threat. Present Mike and Aizawa begin to announce the UA Sports Festival. Heyo, what's up sports fans? Pull out those cameras and get ready. This year we will bring you the hottest performances guaranteed. Just one question, are you all ready? Let's hear you scream as our students make it to the stage. The crowd roars in excitement as our main character. And the rest of the class make their way out to the stadium while getting hyped up by present Mike. The hero, Midnight, makes her way to the center stage while providing fanservice to announce Izuku to come up and do the speech. Izuku gets nervous as he isn't much of a public speaker. But he pulls out his best poker face and gives the best speech he can dish out. Hello everyone, my name is Izuku Midoriya. I hope you all enjoy seeing the power that will be displayed into all the students out there. You better give your best and show the world how amazing you are. It was not a good speech but it got the crowd roaring nonetheless. After the speech, Midnight announces the first phase of the sports festival, the obstacle race. All the classes will participate in this contest. As long as none of you leave the course, you can do whatever your heart pleases. All the students get ready at the starting line. Right when Midnight announces everyone to start, Izuku and Bakugo immediately speed blitz through the tunnel. Once they came out, they immediately started flying towards the finish line. Bakugo tried using his howitzer impact in combination with flying in order to catch up. But Izuku was able to make it to first place within practically seconds, with Bakugo coming in second, not too long after. The crowd was silent as they didn't even know what happened. That's when present Mike, while in disbelief, announces that Izuku came in first place and Bakugo came in second. Holy crap, did those two kids fly. They finished the race super fast. The match has barely even started. Present Mike shouts through the mic. He was dumbfounded and so were the audience. After the first few seconds of silence from how amazed they were, everyone started to cheer for the two. All the students were in shell shock besides most of the students in class 1A. But the class was stunned to hear that Bakugo came in second in such a fast time. Well folks, we have our first place winner, Izuku Midoriya, and our second place winner, Katsuki Bakugo. How did they even finish the race so fast? What the hell are you feeding these kids Aizawa? Hell, what have you been juicing on? The last time I saw you, you were pretty skinny. You still have a slim figure but you're hella shredded. Take off your shirt and show everyone. You can grind cheese on those apps. First of all, no. That's just weird. I won't take off my shirt to show off my physique. I know that those two have trained very hard to achieve the power they have right now. And to answer your other question, I trained very hard myself. Now Mike, put your focus on the other students out there instead of asking these pointless questions. After the initial surprise, all the students get back to the race. Todoroki was pissed that the race had barely started and two of his classmates already finished it in less than a few seconds. That's when the bi-colored teen began to freeze the tunnel of the entrance while making a break for it. Since Todoroki was distracted for the first half a minute of the match, some of the students were able to make a break for it. While running, a couple robots try to jump our favorite edgelord, but he sees this as an opportunity to use them against the other contestants by freezing them at the right time. While the other students are still doing their race, Izuku is just hanging out at the stands with Goku and All Might and eating some takoyaki. Bakugo went to wait and go do his own thing. The three are watching the rest of the students and the boy is cheering on his classmates. The people in the crowd are just watching the boy just nonchalantly hanging out with the number one hero. In the stands, Izuku sees Momo taking off her shirt so she can make a cannon to destroy a robot. He keeps his full attention on the girl, but gets disappointed when the camera pans away from her view. All Might noticed and gave a laugh, embarrassing the boy. Some time after, Todoroki came in at third place with the rest of the contestants coming in after. After all the students make it to the center stage, Izuku and Bakugo come out so they can get started with the second. Izuku sees Minda hanging onto Momo so he uses a held back Delaware smash to get him off of her. After the race, Midnight shows off the leaderboard with Izuku in first place. The top 42 will advance to the next round. Now the real fun is about to begin. The opportunity to show yourself off. Let's see what's in store for all of you next. Will your fantasies come to life? Or could it be that the weight of it all is torturous? So prepare yourself. For this, the hero announces the cavalry battle. The participants will form a team of 2 to 4. It is the same as a playground game but the difference is that each player has been assigned a point value based on the obstacle course. The most points assigned to the first place contestant is 10 million points. When Midnight said that last statement, Izuku noticed everyone giving him hungry eyes. 
This makes the green-haired boy a little bit nervous but it isn't anything he can't handle and he knows that. Everyone has the idea that if they go after Izuku's team then they will have that part of the competition in the back. That is right everyone. It is survival of the fittest and a chance for anyone at the bottom to overthrow the top. That's when the screen pans at Izuku while everyone stares him down. Here are the rules. The game will last 15 minutes. Individual point values will be added together to reach your team total. Steal as many headbands to raise your team's score and any headbands must be worn from the neck up. And another thing, even if your headband gets stolen or your team falls, you can keep playing until the time is up. But if you make a team fall on purpose, I will slap you with a red card and your team will be disqualified. After Midnight makes her announcement, she gives the students 15 minutes to make their teams. Since Izuku has the most points, almost all the other contestants don't want to team up with him, so the first person our protagonist asks to join his team is Momo. Hey Momo, would you like to make a team? Momo smiled and was glad that she was the first person he asked, but she declined. Well to be honest, I do, but I feel like if I join your team, it will be an easy win so I'm not sure. Ever since that villain attack, I felt so useless, especially when you got us out of there and dealt with that situation on your own. I want to show you and the rest of the world that I can be a great hero who can handle her own. Really, that's a bummer, but I understand. Show the world what you got and make sure you make it to the next round. Izuku tells the girl as he pants her head. Momo blushes from this affection. That's when Yuraka appears right behind Izuku. Hey Deku, are you still looking for any teammates? If so, I would like to join. When Yuraka came in and asked Izuku that, with her cute and innocent smile, Momo's attitude and outlook made a complete 360 degree turn. Never mind, I'll be joining your team. Alright, that will be neat but what about your statement from earlier? What statement? Momo asks, hoping he wouldn't bring it up. You know. What you said earlier about feeling useless and wanting to be a great hero who can handle her own. Did I say all that? You must have imagined it. So can I join your team? Izuku was confused about this development but happily accepted her in the team. That's when our protagonist looks at Yuraka and asks her. Hey Achako, would you still like to join my team as well? Yeah Deku, I wouldn't have asked if I didn't want to. That reminds me. Why do you want to join my team anyways? Wouldn't it be beneficial for you to join another team since I will be a target? Well yeah, but you are the strongest here and it's better to join up with people you like. Yuraka says with a smile and fists pumped up. This makes Izuku's heart tense up since her expressions and words would make anyone's heart falter. This adds to Momo's jealousy of the girl, but still keeps her cool for the sake of keeping the peace. But that's when Momo thinks about what Izuku's mother told her and then she remembers the condoms and gets embarrassed. Izuku and Yuraka look at the girl with confusion as her face is red and is covering up her face with her hands. Some people try to pony up Bakugo to try to join his team but the explosive blonde doesn't remember any of his classmates' names and quirks. That's when Kirishima makes his entrance and tries to convince the Chihuahua to allow him to join his team. Yo Bakugo, you should let me join your team. Hey dumb hair, my name is Kirishima, and my hair is not too different from yours. I know you want to be the rider, so you're going to need a strong front horse that won't get hurt from your blasts, and that will be me, Kirishima says, trying to convince Bakugo. First of all, my explosions will kill you if I'm not careful enough, even with your quirk, and I can fly so why do I need you? Wait, you can fly now. Since when? How? That reminds me. How did you get so strong so fast? You see that goofy looking guy in orange hanging out with All Might over there? I trained with him. So again, why do I need you? This gets Kirishima thinking. He was surprised about this development, but he doesn't get deterred. Is that the guy Midoriya mentioned before? Doku, right. Yeah, now stop wasting my time and answer my question. I can be your shield. Any direct attacks, I will be able to shield you from any attack that will come your way. So you'll have a rock-hard defense and if you decide to let loose with your quirk, I will be able to handle the impact. Like I said earlier, you won't survive the impact of my explosions unless I am very careful. I don't think I need any of your rejects in my team. If I could do the match myself, I would. Come on man, let's go charging into battle together and grab the 10 million points. 10 millions points bro, let's get it. This causes Bakugo's ears to light up so he accepts him into his team. Izuku tries to look for a third person to join his team, but no one wants to join. Even Ida refuses, giving a similar speech to the one he did in canon. So Izuku decides that he will just have Momo and Yuraka in his team, but that's when Mei Hatsum makes her entrance. Person in first place, team up with me. Holy crap. Jesus Christ. Who are you? My name is Mei Hatsum and I'm a student in the support course. We haven't met but I would like to use your current fame to my advantage. If I team up with you, I will be in the spotlight and part of the team everyone will focus on. That means all my cute babies will be seen by the big companies who are tuning into the sports festival. It would be a good way to show my babies. While still rambling on, Momo and Yuraka try to get a word in, but they are getting completely ignored. 
While Hatsum and Izuku are nerding out, Momo can't help but feel jealous and clingy. Hiroraka gives the two a blank, deadpan expression and thinks to herself, Huh, they sure do get along well. Takoyami ended up joining Todoroki's team. All the teams are ready and Midnight tells them all to begin. Once the match began, a couple of teams started rushing towards Izuku. Momo creates smoke bombs and throws them to the ground to give them a distraction. That's when Yuraka makes all of her teammates float and uses the jetpack she has from Hatsune to make everyone float. While Izuku flies, Bakugo sees this so he gets off his teammates and starts flying, surprising all of his classmates. Some of the other students ask if that's allowed, but Midnight gives the eye okay. Without having any other choice, Izuku gets off of his teammates and flies towards Bakugo's direction. Bakugo tries to grab Izuku's headband, but the green-haired lad is too fast for the barking Pomeranian so he comes up with a plan. Bakugo uses a AP shot, infused with Kai, and blasts it towards Izuku's teammate. With no other choice, Izuku uses instant transmission to teleport to his team and smacks his attack away, shinging the hair on his arms. While Izuku was distracted, Bakugo got the jump on him and stole the first place headband. Everyone was surprised but the crowd started cheering in excitement. Bakugo started gloating so he got distracted. While gloating, Manama was able to get behind Bakugo and stole all the headbands he had. Your class is pretty small-minded. You all should think bigger. What the hell did you say you bastard? Come back here. You're a pretty famous guy aren't you? You were attacked by that sludge villain. You'll have to tell me about it sometime. It must be pretty strange that you always find yourself in the role of the victim. Didn't one of your classmates have to save you and the rest of your class also? Sure seems like Class 1A are mostly just victims than heroes. Manama's words pissed off Bakugo, giving the boy an angry expression so he told Kirishima, Kirishima, change of plans, I am going to kill that fucker. Relax Bakugo, we can get our points back but you need to take a breather. No, I'm going to get my goddamn headband back, even if I have to rip it from his corpse. While Manama was busy trying to antagonize Bakugo, Izuku uses instant transmission while flying and steals his headband back and returns to his team. Present Mike and the crowd were astonished. First place kept on getting swapped around, but Izuku and his team were able to go back to the top. Manama and his team were caught off guard, but Bakugo used that to his advantage. Bakugo flies towards Manama and steals all of his headbands, including the one he lost. After that, Bakugo punches Manama straight in the face. He held back extremely so he doesn't actually murder the boy, giving him a bloody nose and a huge mark that will last for a while. Manama copies Bakugo's quirk and uses it against him but it literally does nothing because of how strong the explosive blonde has become. Without having any other choice, Manama and his team had to bail and look for other headbands to steal. Todoroki tried to get the jump on Izuku with the help of Dark Shadow, but that was a major fail since Izuku could just fly away from his team and the others. Takoyami uses Dark Shadow to try to reach towards Izuku's headband, but our protagonist uses the solar flare to get rid of him. Izuku doesn't plan on stealing others' headbands. But there are still a bunch of other teams trying to steal his. When Todoroki's plan failed, Izuku tells the bi-colored boy, Like I said Todoroki, you stand no chance, especially with half your strength. So stop being a coward and give me everything you got. That's when Todoroki uses his flames unintentionally. But when he hears Endeavor cheering, he realizes what he was doing and extinguishes his flames. This annoys Izuku, but he lets it go and focuses on not getting jumped by the other contestants. Momo, Yuraka, and Hatsum are providing support for Izuku. Yuraka would use her gravity quirk to keep her teammates afloat and use the jetpack for herself. Momo would create some support items for Hatsum so she can make sure her babies stay well and working. Without having any other choice, Todoroki and his team changed their focus on the other contestants so he wouldn't fall behind. Aida was thinking about using his secret technique, but he doesn't have the confidence that it would do anything since Izuku is pretty fast with fast reflexes. With only a few moments left, Bakugo tries to jump Izuku but time is up. Present Mike shouts, time's up everyone. Now let's take a look at who the top 14 are. In first place, we have Izuku Midoriya. His points were passed around but he managed to stay on top. In second place, we have Team Bakugo. In third place, we have Team Todoroki. And in fourth place, we have Team Shinzo. After that eventful match, Present Mike announces, we have our top four teams that will make it to the next round. Now we will take a break and then get started on the next activities. Hey Eraserhead, wanna grab some food? No, I'm going to take a nap. Wait, before you go, how the hell did you get so shredded? Aizawa ignores Mike and uses instant transmission to teleport away. What the hell, did Eraserhead teleport like that Midoriya kid? What the heck did I miss? Everything is confusing now. 
After that event, Izuku's friends decide to chat with each other but Momo wonders where the green-haired boy is. That's when Yuraka asks, has anyone seen Deku? That's when the screen pans to Izuku and Todoroki. So what's up Todoroki? Why did you drag me here anyways? Todoroki continues to stare into Izuku's soul. Then the screen switches to Goku, All Might, and Endeavor. Hey what's up Endeavor? Long time no see. Let's catch up. While Goku is still eating his food, he recognizes the number 2 hero. Hey, I remember you. You were the fire guy I first fought. With a menacing tone, Endeavor says, All Might. And it looks like you made a new friend. I remember you too, son Goku. What's up everyone? Welcome to part 10 of the series What If Goku Trained Deku. If you guys have been enjoying this series so far then make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification if you like to see more of the series in the future. So make sure you guys do all that. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Todoroki stares down our protagonist. Alright, seriously Todoroki, why did you bring me here in this odd tunnel where no one could see us? Wait, are you going to confess your feelings for me? I'm flattered but I'm into women. Sorry to burst your bubble. What? No, shut up. Alright then, why am I here anyways? Izuku asks, not understanding what's going on. I was feeling pretty overwhelmed and because of that, I broke the promise I made to myself a long time ago. Is it about using your fire side? Yeah, but that's not the only thing that's on my mind. There's something I need to know. Are you all my secret love child? That question surprised the boy. It was just so unexpected. Izuku had a deadpan expression on his face. What in the world would make you come up with a crazy thought like that? Yeyurizu said you, All Might, and that Goku guy are practically like family so it gives me a good reason to believe that All Might could be your dad. It's not like that you'll believe me but All Might is not my father. My father is named Hisashi Midoriya. He works overseas, which is why he isn't around. So why and how are you so close with All Might? This question caught Izuku off guard so he tries to come up with a good response for Todoroki. I can't really explain why we're so close, it kind of just happened. It's like how people become friends. People don't just become friends, it usually just happens. That's usually how a lot of relationships are formed. Well, I guess I can accept that. It does make sense after all. But now that I know the story, I have more reason to beat you. Alright, now my turn. Tell me why you don't use your fireside Todoroki. You have such amazing power, but you don't even use it. So tell me, why? Todoroki had a feeling that Izuku would ask a question like that so he was prepared to answer. Well you know, my father is the number two hero. Wait, is this going to be a long story? If so, may I have permission to read your mind? I think it would be easier and faster that way. You can read minds. What can't you do, Midoriya? There are a lot of things I can't do Todoroki. I am human after all. So, do I have your permission to read your mind? We don't have all day, you know. Alright then, sure thing. I give you permission to read my mind as long as you don't share any of the information you see with anyone. With Todoroki's blessing, Izuku uses the mind-reading techniques on Todoroki to learn more about the boy. When Izuku sees the memories, he starts crying. He hasn't cried in a long while since he met Goku, but seeing what Todoroki went through, it would make anyone sad. I'm sorry Todoroki, I didn't know. So now you understand the reason I don't like to use my other half. After all the things my father put me and my family through, that's why I don't use my other half. As Izuku wipes away his tears, he says, but still, the power you have, it's yours Todoroki. No one else's. Not your mom's power. Not your dad's. It's not anyone's power. It's your power and it belongs to you. I hope you know or will realize that. Izuku's words struck a chord with the bi-colored team, but he is still apprehensive about using his flame. The green-haired boy uses instant transmission and teleports to his friends so he can get some food with them before the next match. Bakugo was eavesdropping in the corner. The camera then pans to Goku, All Might, and Endeavor. Hey what's up Endeavor? Long time no see. Let's catch up. While Goku is still eating his food, he recognizes the number 2 hero. Hey, I remember you. You were the fire guy I first fought. With a menacing tone, Endeavor says, All Might. And it looks like you made a new friend. I remember you too, son Goku. So what do you two fools want? All Might tells the number 2 hero, Well, I haven't had a chance to talk to you since that press conference. Huh, did you now? Well, if that's all you wanted to do then we're done here. Goku stops Endeavor. Wait, before you go, would you like to fight again sometime? I can tell you have gotten a bit stronger since we last fought. No chance. I'm not going to bother with the likes of you and All Might. Don't act like we're friends here. 
What a joke, Endeavor says as he walks away with no care. That's when Goku Speed blitzed right in front of the number two hero and asked him with his hands clapped together, please, I think you have a cool power and I see a lot of potential in you. Endeavor with some curiosity, asks Goku, that Midoriya kid, did you train him? He uses the same techniques as you. Yes sir, and I can help you get stronger too. Goku tells the hero, Endeavor doesn't seem too fond of the idea since Goku is besties with All Might. I won't train with you, since you're friends with All Might, and I hate that fool, and to be quite frank, I hate you too. You are too similar to All Might. It made Goku sad when Endeavor but our favorite Saiyan brings back his smile. And that's another thing, your stupid smile. You smile as much as that fool over there. It disgusts me so much. That's when Goku's smile becomes even brighter, annoying the flame hero. As Endeavor was about to walk away, he says, my son, Shoto, will surpass both of you, and he will be the number one in my steed. I'll make sure of that. That's why I made him. You did what now? He's being rebellious right now, but he will grow out of it and he will take your place as the number one. He will even become stronger than your friend there. I'll make sure of that. Are you talking about that kid that was using the ice powers most of the time? He is pretty amazing and pretty strong. Can I help him get stronger sometime? Goku asks the flame hero eagerly. When Endeavor heard Goku's offer to train his son, the gears in his head started turning. The number two hero thinks to himself, I don't want nothing to do with this guy, but he can probably make Shoto stronger than ever. He could even learn those tricks that the Midoriya knows. Then he might be able to surpass that blasted all might. With a cold tone, Endeavor tells the Saiyan right before walking off, do whatever the hell you want. I don't care. Now leave me alone. The final round of the sports festival is about to begin. That's when present Mike makes his announcement. Welcome back sports fans. It's almost time for the last round. But before that, good news for anyone who didn't make it to the finals. There are some fun side games you can participate in. We even brought cheerleaders to get your blood pumping. Present Mike and Eraserhead paused and noticed something. Pulled up. Looks like Class 1A is going full on fan service. That's when Minta and Kaminari gave each other a thumbs up. Momo, seeing this, shouts, what? You tricked us. Why do I always end up falling for that pervert stupid schemes? When Izuku walks by, she forgets about Minta's prank and decides to have a small chat with our protagonist. Alright everyone, I hope everyone has fun with the recreational games. After that, the 16 contestants that have made it to the final rounds will fight it out, one in one, tournament style. Midnight gets on the stage and tells the students, get closer so you all can draw lots to see who you're up against. Then you guys can enjoy playing the recreational games before we start. The 16 finalists can either participate or sit out to prepare for the battle. I will start with the first place team. As Midnight was about to get started with the lots, Mashur Awajiro raises his hand and tells the hero that he is withdrawing. Ada and Izuku are wondering why he wouldn't want to participate. Well, it wouldn't be right. I don't even remember anything from the cavalry battle until the end of it. I think it has something to do with that guy's quirk. I know this is a great opportunity, but because of my pride, I will be withdrawing. That's when another dude from Class 1B withdrew also. That turns me on. You guys are withdrawn from the match. That's when everyone says, did she just say that turns her on? Midnight would have to decide who would take their places. That's when Itsuka Kendo from Class 1B recommended Team Tetsu Tetsu so Midnight allowed Tetsu Tetsu and Shizaki to move on to the next match. I will not be going into much detail with some of the matches until the interesting ones happen. The first match is Momo Yeirazu vs Mei Hatsum. Hatsum uses Momo as a guinea pig to test her inventions, similar to what she did to Ida in the can. After that, she quits the match, confusing Momo. Momo wins the match, but she doesn't like how she was used as an advertising tool. The second match is Izuku Midoriya vs Fumikage Takoyami. Takoyami summons Dark Shadow but Izuku uses a solar flare to bring him at bay. Each time Takoyami would summon Dark Shadow, Izuku would just keep using the solar flare, so Takoyami would use Dark Shadow to try to attack Izuku while hiding in his clothing. That's when Izuku uses a held back Delaware Smash to blow Takoyami out of the ring. Dark Shadow would try to grasp out of the wing, but the Delaware Smash was too much for the creature to handle. Izuku wins the match. The third match is Shoto Todoroki vs Denki Kaminari. Todoroki would just freeze Kaminari and move on to the next match. The fourth match is Tenya Ida vs Mina Ashido. Mina would use her acid to slide around the ring, like a skiing ring and attack it but Ida would easily be able to outspeed the girl with his quirk. That's when would use her acid and spray a lot all over Ada's engines, effectively making it useless. She would try to uppercut the speedster, but Ada would grab her by the arm and pin her down into the ground. I apologize for pinning you down in such an unsightly manner, but I'm going to win this battle. If you're going to put a girl in such a position, you could at least buy her dinner first. Ada gets distracted by that statement for a second. That's when Mina would secrete acid from her skin, burning the boy's hand. 
With no other choice, Ada quickly got his hands off of her and used one of his legs to keep her pinned to the ground. Since Ada doesn't skip leg day, Mina could feel the force and pressure that Ada is causing and quits the match. Ada wins this match. The fifth match is Tetsu 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 vs Hitoshi Shinso. Before the match starts, Shinso antagonizes Tetsu Tetsu by insulting him. When present Mike announces the match to begin, Shinzo still continues to talk shit in order to control him. Tetsu Tetsu got agitated and was about to say something, but he fell right into Shinzo's trap. Present Mike and the audience were wondering what was going on. That's when Shinzo tells Tetsu Tetsu to walk off the ring, and he does so. The crowd started cheering for Shinzo as his friends and classmates cheered for him as well. This makes the boy smile, giving him hope that he will become a hero. The 8 matches Yuga Ayama vs Achako Yuraka. Ayama would use his belly button blasts on Yuraka, but the girl is able to get out of the way from the blasts. The girl thinks to herself that Ayama's blasts are lame compared to the energy blasts that Izuku can create. Ayama would keep on using his navel laser until he exhausts his energy and quits the match. The 7th match is Katsuki Bakugo vs Hanta Siro. Bakugo didn't feel like wasting his time so he punched the air and sent Siro flying out of the ring. His class has been surprised by the power Bakugo has been displaying and they want to know how they could get stronger as well. The final match is Ibarra Shizaki vs Aijiru Kirishima. Kirishima instantly gets hard as hell and rushes in for the attack. That's when Shizaki uses her vines to push him back. But with the tenacity of Kirishima, he tries to break through the vines. Shizaki then decides to use her vines to wrap around Kirishima, preventing him from escaping. Kirishima tries to break free but Shizaki keeps on reinforcing her grip with her vines and that's when the girl throws Kirishima out of the ring, winning the match. What is good everyone and welcome to part 11 of what if Goku trained Deku. I hope you guys have been enjoying the series so far. If you guys liked it then make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for more videos in the future. I hope you all enjoy the video and have a good time. After the first matches are done and over with, our protagonist is seen talking to Momo, Yuraka, and Ida. Momo tells Izuku, hey, don't you dare go easy on me during our match. I will give you everything I got so you better do the same. The thing is Momo, if I don't go easy on you, I'll end up hurting you by accident. You should train with us sometimes so you can get stronger too. Momo huffs and crosses her arms. Alright, 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 I'll tell you this. I will make it a challenge for you. Momo still has her face huffed and arms crossed together. Alright, fine, I guess I'll accept that. Yuraka joins in the conversation and says, I can't wait to see you two fight. It's going to be an exciting match. Yes, I agree. But it's going to be hard to root for either one of you since you two are my friends after all. Ida says to both of them. Izuku looks at Momo and says with a huge smile on his face with a fist bump for the ready, do your best Momo. Let's make this a match worth remembering. Momo is happy with the sentiment and gives our protagonist a fist bump. Izuku and Momo get ready for their quarter-final match. They are on the ring and both are ready. The match is announced and Momo rushes in to attack Izuku. Momo creates a weapon to use against the boy, but he dodges with ease. While Momo is trying to strike Izuku, the boy is coaching her at the same time, giving her tips on how to fight better. What is Midoriya doing? Is he giving her tips on how to fight? Present Mike shouts through the microphone. After some time, Izuku flies up and grabs Momo, gently carrying her out of the ring. Momo isn't too fond of the thought of losing, but she still had a great time during the match. The second match of the quarterfinals is Shoto Todoroki vs Tenya Ida. Todoroki would try to freeze Ida, but it wouldn't turn out the same as in his last match. Ida would use his engines to get out of the way. I won't be defeated so easily Todoroki. If you want to beat me, you will have to be faster. Ida rushes in towards Todoroki's direction. The bi-colored teen would use his ice to block Ida's direction but he would move past the ice. Ida was close to Todoroki and tried to kick Todoroki unconscious. But Todoroki would use his ice to try to block the attack, so Ida went to his other side and attacked from there. Seeing this, Todoroki would unconsciously use his flames, forcing Ida to step back. This annoys Todoroki since he had to use his fireside. Ida tries to rush in so he can attack again, but Todoroki decides to freeze the ground of the ring, causing Ida to slip out of the ring. 
Todoroki wins the match. After that match was done and over with, Ida gets a call from his family, delivering the bad news to him. Izuku and friends were worried for the boy and asked what was wrong, but Ida tells them that something happened to his brother and has to get going. The third match of the quarterfinals is Hitoshi Shinzo vs Achako Uraraka. Before the match starts, Shinzo tries to antagonize like he did to his last opponent. Uraraka has a feeling on what the boy's quirk can do so she decides not to say anything. When the match starts, Shinzo continues to keep talking shit. Uraraka is just standing there and decides to walk at a normal place towards his direction. Shinzo's getting worried so he tried to get personal with his trash talking, even mentioning her friends. When Shinzo starts talking shit about Izuku, that sets the girl off so she slaps him in the face and shouts, Don't you ever talk about Deku like that. He's a great guy so don't put his name in your mouth. Hearing that stunned Izuku. He didn't know Uraraka cared about him that much to potentially lose the match. When the crowd and present Mike saw that, they all were in silence. No one expected the girl to do that. But when the girl spoke, already fell into Shinzo's trap. Alright, I'm sorry. Now walk out of the ring. Being stuck in Shinzo's mind control, Uraraka walks out of the ring. Shinzo wins the match. The crowd started cheering for Shinzo louder than before. When Uraraka breaks free from the mind control, she feels sad and disappointed in herself for falling into Shinzo's trap. Hey you, you're Raka right. I really am sorry for making you upset like that. I was just trying to win, but I have some advice for you. It seems you really care about that Midoriya guy. I hope you will get to him before it's too late. Shinzo tells the girl. What do you mean? Uraraka asks. You know exactly what I mean. Shinzo replies back, causing Uraraka to get flustered and embarrassed. The final match of the quarterfinals is Ibarra Shizaki vs Katsuki Bakugo. Shizaki tries to use her vines to grab onto Bako, but the explosive blonde doesn't feel like wasting his time so he grabs the vines and throws Shizaki out of the ring. During their match, Izuku would talk to Uraraka, trying to comfort the girl. Hey Uraraka, are you doing alright? Yeah, I am. I'm still kind of bummed that I fell for that guy's trap though. I still think you did pretty amazing out there. You were great, and I appreciate what you said out there. Uraraka remembers that moment and gets embarrassed. Yeah, it's no problem. Don't worry about it. What are friends for? Uraraka says with a stutter. Hey, is something wrong? Your face is extremely red. Izuku puts his hands on the girl's forehead to see if she has a fever. It doesn't seem like a fever so it must be something else. You should see recovery girl. Uraraka waves her hands around and shouts, It's nothing. It's nothing. I'm doing alright. You should get on going. Don't want to miss your next match for the semi-finals. Yeah, that's true. Hope to see you around after my match. You will. I'll be watching, so good luck out there. Now it's time to move on to the semi-final matches. Izuku was about to get ready for his match with Todoroki. On his way to the ring, Endeavor bumps into our protagonist. Oh hey, I was looking for you. You were looking for little Ami. I must be very special. So why were you looking for me? Hopefully nothing weird or else I'll get Chris Hansen on the line. Izuku said playfully. Huh, what? No, I saw your fights. Your power was pretty impressive. I guess that's what happens when you train with that Goku guy. And since you train with that Goku guy, that means you're affiliated with All Might. Yeah, and so what if it? Why does it matter to you Endeavor? It's my boy Shoto's duty to surpass All Might and take his place in my steed and his match with you will be a good testing ground to see how much training he has left. So make sure you go all out. Don't disgrace yourself and him by holding back. That's all I wanted to say. Endeavor was about to walk off until Izuku releases his inner Bakugo and shouts, What you think I would help an abusive piece of human filth such as yourself? If daddy wants attention from his son, then maybe stop being the human scum you are and figure your shit out yourself. Izuku walks off, shocking Endeavor. The boy didn't know he had it in him to do such a thing but he knew it was well deserved. Izuku and Todoroki are in the arena, waiting for the match to get announced. While they were waiting, Izuku tells Todoroki about the crap Endeavor trying to pull. Yo Todoroki, your dad cornered me earlier. He wanted me to go all out on you. Pretty sure he wanted me to get you to use your fire side. Hearing this made Todoroki angry. What did you say to that bastard? I basically called a human abusive piece of human filth and scum and told him to figure out his own crap for himself. Izuku tells the bi-colored teen. Todoroki laughs, feeling relieved that Izuku didn't put him up to anything. But nonetheless, like I told you before, I will not be taking you seriously if you don't go all out against me. The match is announced. Todoroki tries to freeze Izuku, but he uses a held back Delaware smash and destroys all the ice coming at him. Todoroki tries and tries to use his ice with no avail. Really Todoroki, your ice won't work. Maybe if you used your fire, then at least I will feel a burn. I'm not fireproof you know. I told you Midoriya, I won't use my damn father's quirk. Why not? It's your best chance of winning. You know why. You saw it all. You saw how I was treated. You saw how I got this scar on my face. You saw all the trauma I went through. Todoroki shouts at Izuku. 
Yeah, I know, but like I said before, it's not his power Todoroki, it's yours, no one else's. You saying it's your mom's side or your dad's side shows how much of a hold your father has won you. It shows that you are in his grasp. It shows that you have already let him win. So take control and show the world that it's your power and no one else's. The words of Izuku inspired Todoroki to light the fire within the boy, causing him to burst into flames. Izuku was excited to see this. He was happy that Todoroki is using his own power, slowly getting out from the grasp of Endeavor. Todoroki knew he wasn't going to win, even with his fire, but despite that, he went all out on his one attack. Izuku creates a Kai barrier around himself so he doesn't get burned by the flames. When the fire dissipates, he gives Todoroki a smile and gives the bi-colored Tina held back Delaware smash, causing Todoroki to fly out of the ring. Todoroki was content with this loss and was happy that he was letting loose of the shackles he had on himself. Endeavor shouts to cheer but Izuku tells the hero to stop talking. Endeavor doesn't appreciate being disrespected so he tries to put his hands on Izuku but Izuku said, You better back off before I embarrass you in front of the whole entire world watching right now. You know I can easily kick your ass Endeavor. So back off. You know what? Try me kid. Izuku's Kai starts flaring up, causing the debris around him to float up. Endeavor sees this and feels the pressure Izuku is causing, so he slowly backs off. The crowd sees this and wonders what's going on. Endeavor feels humiliated. He could tell that Izuku is definitely stronger than him and it infuriates him. A hero feels a need to get stronger but has too much pride to ask Goku to train him too. The last match of the semi-finals would be Katsuki Bakugo vs Hitoshi Shinzo. When the both of them went up to the arena, Shinzo started with his normal plan of talking shit to get Bakugo to talk. Bakugo decides to humor Shinzo. When the match starts, Bakugo says, You know what? I'll humor you. The explosive blonde was caught in Shinzo's mind control. This surprised Shinzo, but he assumes that Bakugo was just being cocky and tells him to walk off the stage. After he said that, Bakugo broke out of the mind control. What? How in the world were you able to break out of that? No one could break out of my control. Spiritual control bitch. Learn about it sometime. Bakugo punches the air and sends Shinzo flying out of the ring, like his other opponents. Shinzo was disappointed but was also content because he was actually able to make it to the semi-finals. He didn't really expect to go so far but he did and he was proud of that so he doesn't feel bitter about it. Before Shinzo leaves, Bakugo gives him a word of advice. Hey you, don't think your quirk will get you so far. Get stronger and learn how to fight. If you can't control a villain, then you'll need to use your hands. Shinzo nods and goes off into the stands with the rest of his classmates. His class and some of the viewers cheered on Shinzo, congratulating him for getting so far into the sports festival. Now we move on to the final round of the sports festival. The fateful match. Izuku Midoriya vs Katsuki Bakugo. Both of the boys are excited for this match. It's a match that will be a challenge for Izuku and Bakugo. When the match starts, both of the boys start flying and they start fighting. Both are so fast that the crowd and Present Mike can't see them but they can feel the pressure from the fight. Not knowing what's going on, Present Mike shouts what's going on. I can't see the two fighting. All I can see are blurs and shockwaves. Aizawa tells the sound hero in the crowd. Well, I can see them fine. It looks like they are having a good time. Going blow to blow. How can you even see that? There's no way anyone could see that. You don't need to see them with your eyes. You can use your senses to make out the fight. Listen here Aizawa, we don't have magic powers like you do. We are normal people, there's no such thing as normal. Anyone can learn to do the things that have been displayed, unless if it relates to quirks, then you can't. You have to train your body and spirit to achieve the power they have. You need to teach us your ways, Aizawa. Maybe one of these days, just maybe. The audience gets in a frenzy, and so does everyone in the UA. They want to learn how they can get as strong also. While Bakugo and Izuku are fighting in the sky, Bakugo knows that he isn't strong enough to beat Izuku in his base state and the green-haired boy hasn't even used one for all. I didn't want to do this but I will have to use that technique for a chance of winning. Kaioken times 12 Bakugo uses his max Kaioken of times 12. Izuku is impressed by Bakugo's power and is forced to use some of one for all. Izuku uses a little bit of full cowling to average around the same strength as Bakugo. Stop holding back on me Deku. I know you can do a lot better than this, so fucking take me seriously. Alright Kachin, let's do this. Full cowling. Izuku uses more of one for all full cowling while they are in the sky. The two are landing blow to blow. Izuku is surprised that he has to use one for all in this fight but is very excited. He doesn't want to keep on using more power so he can keep the fight lasting but he knows he will have to end it eventually. Hey Kachin, let's end this with a beam struggle. Winner takes all. Bakugo doesn't mind and is happy to hear this. I will show you Deku. Get ready for my ultimate move. Both charge up their beams. Izuku charges up a Texas Kamehameha and Bakugo charges up an AP Kamehameha. 
The crowd and present Mike are wondering what the two are doing in the sky. What's going on? Seems like the two stop, but all I see is a light emanating from both of their hands. Aizawa tells present Mike. They both are charging up for their final attack. You guys better have sunglasses because it will be a light show. The two launch their final attacks. It was an amazing display. Izuku's attack overtook Bakugo's and the explosive blonde dropped from the sky outside the arena. Izuku Midoriya won the sports festival. Izuku flies down and helps Bakugo up. After that amazing battle, it was time for the top three to get their rewards. All Might appears and hands the first place medal to Izuku and pats him on the head. I'm very proud of you, young Midoriya. You did amazing. Then the hero gives the second place medal Bakugo and gives him a hug. You were amazing out there, young Bakugo. You showed an amazing display of power and you've come so far since we first met. All Might then gives the third place medal to both Todoroki and Shinzo. Young Todoroki, you were able to conquer and overcome and young Shinzo, you were able to make it so far with such an amazing quirk. Make sure to train your body and mind though. Your quirk will only get you so far. Shinzo was happy to hear those words coming from All Might. He will take the advice from Bakugo and All Might to heart and become stronger. All Might gives Shinzo and Todoroki his card and says, If you guys want to get stronger like young Midoriya and Bakugo, then give me a call and I'll get my friend Goku to help you. After all of that, Izuku goes to celebrate with Goku and All Might. Izuku's friends, besides Ida since he's gone, congratulate him on his victory. Young Midoriya, since you won, let me treat you and your friends to a buffet on me. Goku gets excited hearing a buffet says to the hero, Buffet, let's go, 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 I wanna eat. Of course you do, Goku. All Might and Izuku couldn't help but laugh at Goku's antics. Momo was thinking of giving Izuku something since he won, but has no clue on what she wants to give him. Then the girl remembers the gift and Ko gave the girl. She blushes but doesn't feel that she's ready for that yet. Hello everyone, welcome to part 12 of what if Goku trained Deku. If you guys enjoy this episode so far then show your support. Hope everyone enjoys and have a good day. Izuku woke up and gets ready for school, but when he looked outside, it was pouring. He would usually fly over to Momo's but he uses instant transmission this time around. When he teleports to her, Momo freaks out. Oh god, I don't think I will ever get used to that. Oh hey, seems like you're already at school, Izuku says as he gives a light smile. Yeah, that's because I have a surprise for you. It's a gift for winning the sports festival. Congratulations. Momo gives Izuku some katsudon that she had made herself. Izuku gets excited because that's his favorite food. Yo, is that katsudon? It's one of my favorite foods. And you made this. Thank you very much. I'm going to kill this before Goku suddenly shows up out of nowhere and eats it all for himself. Izuku scarfs down the katsudon, leaving none in sight. Momo was glad that he enjoyed it. They put their shoes in their shoe lockers and then they run by Ida. Izuku tried talking to Ida. Hey dude, are you alright? I hope your brother's doing alright. Don't worry Midoriya, there's nothing to be concerned about. I apologize for making you worry but everything will be fine. Ida gives a fake smile and walks away. Izuku isn't really buying it. He knows something is up. The class gets ready and Aizawa makes his announcement. Hello everyone. Today we will have a class on hero informatics. You guys will need to have code names, so time to pick your hero identities. This is related to the pro hero draft picks I mentioned before. Usually, students wouldn't have to worry about the draft until their second or third year, but your class is different. Pros are investing in your potential. Aizawa shows the poll for the total offers of each of the students. Izuku scored the highest amounts of offers in his class. Despite if you had any offers or not, you all will be interning with pros. After talking about the internships, Midnight comes into the class so she can help decide hero names for the class. This would go about the same as in canon but the only difference is that Izuku is more confident and prideful when he chooses his name. By the time the class gets to go through their offers, some of the classmates see that they would have gotten offers from Goku and All Might. Since Goku isn't an official hero, All Might will be there. The students that Goku reached out to were Momo, Bakugo, Yuraka, Ida, Todoroki, and Kirishima. Besides Momo and Bakugo, when the others saw the name Goku, they assumed it was the guy who trained Izuku and All Might so they asked the green-haired boy to confirm it. They mark Goku as their hero work study besides Ida. They are excited to learn how to become as strong as Izuku and All Might. Everyone picks the hero they decide to have their work study with. As Izuku and his friends were about to leave the class to carry on with their day, All Might speed blitzed by so he could have a chat with Izuku. Ha 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 ha, I am here. Hello young Midoriya, I would like to talk to you for a second. All Might and Izuku go to a place where they can talk alone. 
Hey, what's up, All Might? What would you like to talk about? All Might seemed to be freaking out. He tells Izuku, my former master, Gran Torino, will join us on our work study. He knows about our secret as he was friends with my predecessor. Gran Torino would like to see your progress with one for all. Really, I get to meet your former master. That's awesome. Izuku was in awe and excitement. Getting to meet All Might's former master feels so surreal to him. Yes, young Midoriya. He used to teach here in UA even though it was for a short period of time, and he was my homeroom teacher. He is also curious about our usage of Kai. After hearing that, Izuku gets very excited to meet him. Now it's the day for everyone to go to their work studies. Koku, All Might, Izuku, and Momo are waiting at the UA entrance for the other students and for Aizawa and Shinzo since the Eraser Hero wanted to bring Shinzo into the Hero course. Goku introduces himself to everyone there that doesn't know him. Hello everyone, my name is Goku. I saw that all of you have great and unique potential and I want to help you get stronger than ever. You guys have amazing power, but imagine how strong you could be with the power of Kai and spiritual control. I believe you all have the potential to be even greater than ever. Yuraka asks Goku, Are you talking about the stuff that Deku can do like flying and shooting energy blasts? Yes, and all of you can do it too. You all can become as strong as me or even stronger if you work hard enough. Goku tells the girl, getting her pumped up. She believes in her heart that she will become strong enough to become a strong hero and give her parents a fruitful life. Izuku gets Goku's attention and asks, What are we doing on the lookout? Isn't our normal spot at the beach? Oh my god. Let's just get this shit over with already. Bakugo complains. Goku looks at the new students and gets their attention. Alrighty, all new students come with me. I would like to train your physical strength first but All Might said we only had a week so I will teach you what I can. Goku smiles and gives a thumbs up to both All Might and Aizawa, letting them know that he has it handled for the day. Aizawa activated his quirk and looked at the students with his devilish red eyes. You all better listen to Goku and not goof around, so be good or else. This scent chills down everyone's spine. The Eraser Hero deactivates his quirk. Shinso walks to the edge of the lookout and freaks out. So am I the only one wondering why we are on a floating building in the sky? Hiroshima's like, Whoa dude, this is hella cool. I can't believe a place like this exists. Awesome. Everyone else looks out the edge and freaks out. All might try to calm everyone down. I understand this whole thing is overwhelming. Well you good luck I guess. Just have your trust in my friend and mentor Goku. And he will help you achieve your best. That still doesn't answer my question, though. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, you are in a floating building. Can we move on already? Bakugo shouts in annoyance and anger. Honestly this feels so surreal, Kirishima says in excitement. No one cares weird hair. Bakugo you don't have to be so rude to everyone. Yuraka tells the explosive blonde. Cool, I don't care round face. Kirishima and Yuraka both say, We have names you know, Bakugo. Bakugo asks, When? Kirishima and Yuraka say, When what? When did I fucking ask? Kirishima and Yuraka try to argue with Bakugo for the stupid nicknames he gave them but the explosive blonde doesn't care. Izuku laughs and says, That's Kachin for you. Giving people stupid nicknames and being an asshole is part of his thing. Shut your mouth nerd. Be grateful that Deku doesn't sound as stupid as Kachin. What do you mean? You use the name to mock me and call me defenseless. Listen, nerd, no one cares about your sad pathetic crybaby backstory. Now let's get this over with. Don't get your panties in a wad, bro. Jesus fucking Christ. Why don't you ever just shut the fuck up? Izuku is just mocking him at this point. Alright all might, I'll see you in a few hours. But for now, I would like to train with myself for a while. Aizawa heads towards the time chamber by himself to train for a few months. Young Midoriya and young Bakugo. I would like you both to follow me as we will be doing hero work. I have printed out a temporary hero license for both of you so you can join me on my heroic duties today. I figured since you two are already very powerful, then you guys can tag along early. Oh hell yeah, I'm finally getting some action. Don't you get plenty of action with your hand of yours? Deku, you aren't fucking funny, now just shut up or else I will blow your face off. What are you gonna do to my face? Oh hell no, nah. that's us, that's it. Die you worthless insect. Bakugo was about to blast Izuku with a Kai blast towards him but Izuku dodges. The energy blast flies past the other students, freaking them all out. Relax young Bakugo, young Midoriya, you should really stop egging him. Common All Might, even you have to admit, it's kind of funny. Before Baku, Izuku, and All Might, Izuku gives his master and friend, Goku, a fist bump and says goodbye to Momo before he leaves. The girl was kind of disappointed that he isn't training with Izuku yet, but this doesn't deter her from learning. At least she is learning from the best teacher to help them. Bakugo and Izuku leave with All Might. Okay, guys get close. I'm ready to teach you all. All the students that Goku invited sat on the floor on the lookout. Momo even pulled out a notebook to write down anything she learns. So I'm going to teach you all how to use the power you had within yourselves the whole time. 
the life energy that is not just within you, but everywhere around. Goku concentrates his energy within his palms to show everyone a Kai ball. Everyone was amazed to see it. Kami came out and offered everyone some snacks. Concentrate the energy within yourself between your palms. Everyone tries to do it but is having a hard time but Shinzo is able to create a small one of the size of a pebble. Good job, Shinzo right. You did it. Now for the rest of you. Just concentrate on bringing the power that's within yourself. If you do that, then you can learn to do other amazing things with your Kai. Momo was the next one to be able to do it with more ease since she's been around Goku, Izuku, and All Might. Todoroki and Kirishima are having a hard time but they eventually figure it out. Goku sees this and is very excited to see that they are learning so fast but that's not the only thing that has the Saiyan excited. He sees that Todoroki's Kai is more unique than the others so Goku asks the bi-colored teen to increase the energy into the Kai ball so he can confirm his suspicion. Following Goku's instruction, Todoroki cups his palms together to create a larger Kai ball that astonishes the other student. The left end of the Kai ball was scorching but the far right side was very cold. Todoroki sees how different his energy is compared to the others and assumes it has something to do with his quirk. Then he tries to experiment. He creates an energy ball with his right hand, focusing it on his right hand to see that cold smoke is falling from the Kai ball and the color of it was a lighter blue. The cold air is starting to freeze his hand so he dissipates the Kai ball. When he does the same thing, channeling his Kai with his left hand, he creates a red-hot Kai ball, he quickly dissipates it since it's starting to burn. Yuraka is having the hardest time. She's really trying her best but she doesn't figure it out. Momo is slightly amused that Yuraka is having a hard time, but when she sees her struggling hard, the girl starts to feel bad. Hey Yuraka, let me help you out. When you cup your palms together, try looking at one certain spot and focus all your energy onto that single point. And when you do, just relax and push the energy into the single point. Wow, thank you Yorazo. That's really helpful. Yuraka gives Momo a smile and a hug for the help. Now Momo is starting to feel bad for being competitive with Yuraka. She's just so nice and has a bubbly personality. It reminds her of Izuku and she's now starting to feel insecure. Goku-sensei, can you teach us more stuff? I want to keep learning more. Yuraka said to Goku with her fists pumped up. Yeah, dude this is awesome. I can't believe something like this is so surreal. What else can you show us? Kirishima asked. Shinzo asks Goku, can you teach us how to fly like you guys? Alright, sure. Just focus the energy in your body and shoot it up from your feet to start. Then surround yourself with that energy to stay floating. The first person to do it was Shinzo. He took Goku's advice and tried to focus his energy and within a few moments, Shinzo was floating slightly above the ground. The others were excited and not so soon after, Momo was the next person to start flying. Momo had a better time flying since she's seen it done so many times as she was able to slightly move around. Yuraka congratulated her and told her that she was amazing. Hiroshima and Todoroki were the last ones to figure it out. When Todoroki flies, he flies higher than the others but has a harder time zipping around. He assumes it could have to do with his fire side. While flying, he accidentally releases his fire, pushing him out of the lookout. When Todoroki noticed that, he lost his concentration and started falling from the building. Goku managed to save him though. We'll be careful there. This place is far up in the sky. Goku said in worry. Seems like you guys are getting the hang of this real fast. I'm glad I chose you guys because you all are amazing. It sucks that the fast guy didn't come though. I feel like he has a lot of potential to be the fastest. Do you mean Ida? You invited him but he didn't choose this as his work study. That honestly surprises me. Yuraka said, wondering why her friend didn't choose to show up. Meanwhile with Izuku, All Might, and Bakugo. All Might had the boys do community service the whole entire time. What the hell All Might? I was expecting to at least fight a villain. Not just do community service. Being a hero is not all about fighting villains. Real heroes help the people and the community alike. Yes, defeating villains is part of the job but beating up bad guys doesn't necessarily make a hero. All Might tells the blonde while picking up trash. Bakugo couldn't disagree with that logic so he continues to pick up litter. Not so soon after, All Might had a serious look on his and blitzed away. Bakugo and Izuku soon followed suit. They all ended up on top of a large skyscraper building. When Izuku and Bakugo appeared right behind the hero, they were confused because it seemed like there was nothing happening until they notice a girl trying to jump off the building. All Might grabbed onto the girl right when she jumped, holding her while flying next to the building. The girl felt someone holding onto her and assumed it was an angel until she opened her eyes and saw the number one hero, All Might. The girl was shocked as she was not expecting All Might and the boys were also surprised because they weren't expecting any of this. After a moment of processing the situation, Izuku puts on his big All Might smile and asks the girl if she was alright, floating next to All Might. The girl is flabbergasted. All Might gently put her down on the building. Hey there, there's no need to do that. 
If you want to talk about it, what's wrong? The girl starts crying, it's because I'm tired. I'm tired of all of this. Izuku asks the girl, what do you mean? For a long time, I've been bullied and discarded for being quirkless. Not even my parents really showed any concern for me compared to my brother and sister who have quirks. Ever since I was little, I always wanted to be a hero, even despite being quirkless, but everyone was telling me to disregard my dreams. The final straw was when my old childhood best friend jumped me in the girl's bathroom after finding out I applied to a hero school and told me to jump off a skyscraper and hope I get a quirk in the next life, then try to be a hero. And this is where we are now. This hits everyone hard. When Izuku was listening to this girl, it was like looking in the mirror. Bakugo was feeling bad as the girl since he can see Deku in this girl. Izuku puts on a smile and said, You know, you and I are very similar. For a long time I was quirkless. My mother cared for me but she shattered my dreams when she didn't comfort me, instead crying with me. I don't blame her for any of it though since she was doing what she can. But I wished she told me I could be a hero despite being quirkless. It wasn't until I met someone who believed in me despite being quirkless and then another someone who told me I could be a hero. Eventually, I awakened my quirk, but still. You don't need to have a quirk to be a hero. Anyone can become a hero despite their limitations and I think you can too. Hearing this shocked the girl. She would have never thought that someone else could relate so much to her. In a nervous tone, the girl asks Izuku, Who were the people that believed in you? Izuku smiled and replied, Well the person that believed in me was a man called Goku and the person who told me that I could be a hero is the big guy that saved you. All Might chimes in and says, Yes young Midoriya is right. Anyone can be a hero. And it took this young man right here for me to remember that. Sometime later, Dawn is about to arrive. The trio went back to doing community service after helping out that one girl. But Bakugo hasn't said much since the incident. After a minute, All Might decided to end things. Alright guys, let's call it a day. You two did so much good today. Like I said before, things like these like helping the community are things others should do, not just heroes. Let's get the others and relax. They all put their hands on Izuku and teleport to the lookout. When they arrived, they see Goku and the other students meditating. When Goku felt their presence, the Saiyan quickly got up to greet them and the other students did too. Momo runs up to Izuku to show him everything she learned. She created a Kai ball and started manipulating its shape to things like animals and even formed it into the shape of Izuku. Then the girl snaps her finger and blows it up. Yuriraka also shows off by flying around Izuku. Wow, you two already learned how to control your energy and you're able to fly. Congrats you guys. Aizawa finally comes out of the time chamber, clothes tattered. When All Might sees the eraser hero, he tries talking to him. Oh hey Aizawa, have you been in there all by yourself? Yeah, but after a few months, I was feeling like I was losing it being alone in there. I'm surprised Aizawa. I think you're coming close to being as strong as me. All Might says as he smacks Aizawa in the back. Well All Might, Goku, I'm going to go home and sleep in the comfort of my own bed. I'll see you around. And Shinzo, if you choose to stay with everyone else today, that's up to you. Well, everyone, I bet it's been a long and eventful day for you. Now I think it's time for everyone to unwind and relax. Seeing that you all learned to fly, come fly with me to the beach. All Might leap off the lookout and heads to the beach where Goku... Izuku and All Might usually hang out at. He keeps a slower pace though so the others could fly along. They all make it there. Since we're here, I'm going to go take a dip in the ocean. All the other students were confused but they decided to go along with it and start swimming, except for Bakugo, Shinzo Todoroki. They don't feel like swimming. Bakugo was sitting on the deck of the beach and was in his thoughts. He was thinking back to the time when he told Izuku to jump out of a window. Seeing the girl from before brought back those memories and he started feeling guilty. He was thinking what if Deku decided to jump out the window. Momo, Yuraka, Izuku, and Kirishima were splashing each other. Izuku sees Bakugo chillin' so he does a massive Texas splash and splashes the blonde chihuahua with the water. What the hell? Who fucking splashed me? Bakugo sees Izuku laughing his ass off, so he knows who the culprit is. He quickly lets go of his guilt and shouts, You motherfucker, I'm going to drown you. Bakugo in a furry speed blitz towards Izuku and decks him into the ocean, head first. They both fly out of the sea and start swinging at each other. All Might was about to step in to stop them but Goku stops the hero from stepping in. Goku would start getting hungry so he decided to go deep into the ocean. After some time, he flies out with a massive squid around 60 feet. Everyone else saw and couldn't believe that Goku actually found that thing in the ocean. All Might asked Goku, Hey Goku, can you please explain to me why you have a massive squid with you? This is going to be my dinner. Goku says as he cooks the creature with a Kai blast. I can buy you food, you know. Good idea. I could always go for seconds. All Might dropped to the floor. Well everyone, are you all hungry? I'm going to order us something to eat. All Might pulls out his phone and calls up the nearest pizza joint. Oh, you're ordering pizza. Get me one that's Hawaiian. All Might decides to order extra pizzas just in case so he doesn't eat everyone else's share. 
Then All Might realized that Goku asked for Hawaiian. While everyone's waiting on the pizza, Goku asks Todoroki, Hey you, can you help me cook this squid with your fire power? This had everyone comedically dropped to the floor. It was starting to get dark and everyone was drying off, except for Todoroki because he was chilling the whole time. The pizza finally arrived as All Might gave Goku 10 boxes for himself so he doesn't eat everyone else. This had the other students dumbstruck. Hello everyone, welcome to part 13 of What If Goku Trained Deku. If you have been enjoying the series so far then make sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe for more videos. It was the next day. Izuku woke up, still tired from the work study the day before, but now has to prepare for it again today. The Greenette wonders what he will be doing today. The dude is just minding his own business, brushing his teeth, but that's when Goku uses instant transmission and shows up out of nowhere. Yo, what's up Izuku? Goku greets Izuku while the boy is still brushing his teeth. What the hell, Goku? I'm in the bathroom. I could have been showering for all you know, Izuku explains to Goku, but the Saiyan doesn't seem to get it. Realizing the conversation is not going anywhere, Izuku just gives up and asks Goku what he's doing at his house. Well, I wanted to get some breakfast, but I remember your mom makes good food, so I was wondering if I can have some. So you came here just for breakfast? Goku pleads, so Izuku reluctantly agrees, only because he appreciates what Goku has done for the boy. Izuku lets his mother know so she can prepare. After Goku and Izuku enjoy their breakfast, Goku tells Izuku to meet him at the beach later so they can prepare for their work study. A few moments later, our main protagonist gets a text from All Might, asking to meet up so he can meet the hero's former master, Gran Torino. This gets Izuku hyped up so he uses instant transmission and teleports to All Might. This freaks out Gran Torino as he was there with the hero. Oh, Jesus Christ. What the hell, kid? You're going to give an old man like me a heart attack. The old hero was freaked out but regained his composure. All Might introduced Torino to Izuku. Hello young Midoriya. I would like you to meet my former master and teacher, Gran Torino. Alright, that's enough Toshi. Nice to meet you, kid. Gran Torino was going to give Izuku a handshake but that's when the old timer propels himself from the ground. Using his quirk to post his speed and kicking power and tried to upper kick the green haired boy. Izuku was able to dodge with ease, and speed blitzed right behind Torino. Izuku grabbed Gran Torino by his leg, hanging him upside down, and said, Are you done yet or? That's when Gran Torino poked Izuku in the eye, causing the boy to let go of the older hero. You shouldn't underestimate anyone, even an old man such as myself. Torino activated his jets and started sipping around, using the walls to boost his attack power, but Izuku was just dodging with ease. He even had his eyes closed while doing so, which impressed the hero. You are a powerful kid, but I want to see you use one for all. Gran Torino tries to increase his speed to get Izuku to use his quirk, not wanting to disappoint the hero. Izuku uses a small portion of one for all full cowling. He knows that he doesn't have to do this but the old timer literally asked so he obliged. Gran Torino can't even keep up with Izuku. Not even a fraction, but the boy's control over the quirk impresses the hero. But there is one thing though. I feel like you haven't reached one for all's full potential. The hero tells the boy. What do you mean? Izuku asked. Well when All Might uses the quirk, he was able to handle the power all at once right when he received the quirk. But for you, it seems like you can increase the power from your normal strength. It seems like you can use it all at once with that ability you call full cowling. I just feel like there's more hidden potential with your power that's different than Tashinori's. This gets Izuku thinking. Well, other than that, I don't think there's anything I can teach you specifically because it seems like you have a handle on your power, but I'll be tagging along. I feel like this old dog can steal you newbies some tricks and I will soon take control. Anyways, we should meet up with Goku at the beach. He's probably with the other students already. All Might and Gran Torino hold on to Izuku while he uses instant transmission to teleport to the beach. They ended up teleporting there while Goku was teaching spiritual control and sensing. The people that were there are Momo, Yuraka, Kirishima, Todoroki, and Shinzo. Yo, what's up Izuku and All Might? You know what Izuku, since you're here, can you teach these guys for me? Bakugo eventually shows up too and Goku asks the blonde to assist Izuku. The chihuahua was annoyed and refused but All Might told him to do it, anyway. Could you tell me why do I have to teach these rejects? I thought it was this guy's job. Goku explains to the blonde, If I am not around anymore, then you and your friends can teach the next generation and pass on what I taught you. That's when Goku leaves with All Might so the hero can get the Saiyan set up with a legal identity. Since Goku is technically not even a legal citizen or a hero, All Might would have to pull some strings in order to get Goku set up on his own. 
The hero even was hoping on getting the say in an official job at UA, so Goku gets a paycheck. Bakugo grumbles under his breath, they're not my friends. Izuku shouts, that's Cap bro. We know you love us. Ugh shut up. Alright, what were you losers learning about again? Bakugo grunts and asks, Goku sensei was going to teach us how to sense energy, your Raka tells them. Oh, that's pretty tough. The best advice I can say is to relax your mind, don't think too hard, and feel out your surroundings. Bakugo tells the girl. Iraraka was still confused. I think I might understand what Bakugo is saying. We have to allow ourselves to sense the world not just by using our eyes, but all the other senses we have, and using our energy, we can. Momo sits down and gets in a meditative state. Izuku was happy that the girl figured it out. Bakugo goes by the girl and kicks sand on her. What the hell, Bakugo? What was that for? Momo shouts in anger. I was testing you by kicking sand on me. Momo shouts. You were supposed to sense it, dumbass. Izuku smacks Bakugo on the head for disrespecting Momo. The blonde headbutts the green-haired boy. Gran Torino tries to break it up by showing them the fear that All Might used to fear. The two soon stop fighting and get back to teaching. Yeah, Momo is right. Don't just rely on your eyes as you should use your whole body as your eyes and feel out the Kai around you. They all take in this advice as they all close their eyes and allow themselves to feel their surroundings. Bakugo decides to see if it worked by kicking Yuraka with sand this time. She gets sand all over and gets mad at Bakugo. Honestly, it's better than what I was going to do, Izuku tells the group. What were you going to do? Momo asked curiously. Well, I was either going to throw rocks at all of you or throw a kai ball to get you all to use your senses to dodge. What Kachin was doing was way mild to my plan. This had everyone freaked out and was glad all they got was sand on their clothes instead of having rocks or energy balls being lunged at them. Gran Torino was confused because he had no clue what was going on, so Izuku catches the old hero up. After a while, no one has really gotten the hang of it yet and everyone is covered by sand. Everyone is pissed off with him for using that as a teaching mechanism. Izuku stops everyone so they can take a break. When they finish their break, Gran Torino decides he wants to see what everyone else is capable of so he tests them, similar to what he did to Izuku in canon. Meanwhile, with Goku and All Might, they got the say in a legal identity and a hero license since he was recommended by All Might. After getting Goku set up, All Might took Goku to the mall so he can get him a wallet to keep his IDs. All Might try to stress the importance of it since he will need it for day-to-day -day life. The hero realizes he should have done this a lot sooner. After that, they got a bank account for Goku with All Might managing it so he can get paid for his work. The last thing to do was to get Goku a job at UA, so he can teach with the hero and get paid for it. Goku and All Might go to Nezu's office to get him to give Goku a teaching position at the school. Nezu was happy to do so since he also knows the full story of Goku's origins. He was hoping that more students would learn about Kai since he saw Izuku's and Bakugo's performances at the sports festival. The sun was over the horizon, as it was about to set soon. After All Might helped Goku acquire a job at the school, the hero's old friend, Detective Tsukachi, came into the school to talk to the hero. Hello old friend, it's been a while time. How can I help you? Since Goku was there also, the detective allows him to tag along since he knows the truth about the Saiyan from All Might. I'm sorry to show up unexpectedly. No problem, my friend. It's always a pleasure to see you. So, how is the investigation? The hero asks his friends. We arrested a bunch of villains, but there was something interesting about the leftover remains from the creature that the Midoriya kid almost vaporized. The detective tells the hero and Saiyan. This had All Might thinking back. Oh, you're talking about the bird creature we fought. I wasn't there for that, Goku says. There were some pieces left of the creature and when the DNA was tested, it was discovered to be the DNA of a low-level thug. When the remains were analyzed, it was also discovered that this person's body was modified with four different DNA signatures, which can explain why he had multiple quirks at once, though. This freaked out the hero as a realization comes into his head. That shouldn't give a person multiple powers unless it was integrated into their body, even if new DNA was introduced. There's someone out there that could be able to pass on quirks to other people. This had the hero shaken as he got up. It can't be. Don't tell me that man is back again. Goku was confused, as he had no clue what the two were talking about. All Might went into detail about his past with Goku and the current situation that's happening now. Goku remembers seeing something about that from the vague memories he had from All Might's mind that one time they exchanged memories. All Might stepped out of the room so he can calm himself down and think, leaving Goku and the detective in the room. Goku leaves to try to talk to the hero and comfort him because to the Saiyan it seemed like All Might was upset. Hey All Might, are you doing alright? Goku asked his friend in worry. Yeah, sorry about that. I just needed to process it. To think, of all the things that I've been through, I don't know when the battle between one for all and all for one will end. All Might said as he sighed in worry and disappointment. 
You're a lot stronger than when we first met, so if you ever fight him again I think you will be able to beat him. No problem, Goku says, trying to reassure him. I'm not sure about that, Goku. This guy is like the devil. A snake lurking in the corner, ready to cause chaos. This confuses Goku, as he doesn't understand the reference the hero made. Alright then we will have to just keep on getting stronger and when the time comes to fight this guy, we will beat him, Goku says with a smile. You know what? Maybe you're right. Well anyway, I think we should check up on the other students, plus I left Grand Torino there. I pray for mercy for the other students. All Might shivers in fear for his former master. Goku uses instant transmission and teleports himself and All Might to their Kai. When they arrive, they show up to see Grand Torino knocking around Momo, Yuraka, Shinzo, Todoroki, and Kirishima. Izuku and Bakugo were sparing with each other on the side. Gran Torino was blowing sand everywhere with the jets from his feet, using the sand as a distraction to get some kicks in. They all try to fly to avoid the old timer, but that is not stopping the hero as he uses his jets to launch himself up. He was knocking everyone around in the air until one student started to avoid the attacks without even having to look back anymore. And that was Momo. She was starting to sense things out so the old timer can't just sneak up on her. Gran Torino realizes that, so he brings up his speed by boosting the power of his jets to land some blows on the girl. Izuku saw that Momo was learning to sense her surroundings, which impresses him because she was learning pretty fast. But this also distracted the boy as Bakugo decked him in the face. After a minute, all might get everyone's attention. What's up, everyone? We are back. I hoped you all learned well and didn't give my former mentor a hard time. No, it was more like he was giving us a hard time. Momo tells the hero. This had All Might chuckling in amusement. Gran Torino turns back and gives All Might a death stare, scaring the number one hero. This had the other students shaken as they can even see the fear in All Might's eyes. Suddenly, Goku, Bakugo, All Might, and Izuku sense many powerful energies suddenly appear out of nowhere. The energies feel weird and yet vaguely familiar. Then All Might gets a phone call. After he answers, he listens and quickly hangs up. With a grimace look on his face, the hero turns towards Goku and Gran Torino and says, Master and Goku, we need to get to Hasu, that creature that attacked us at the USJ. There are more of them and they are rampaging the city. We have to go now. All Might grabs Gran Torino and starts flying toward Hasu City. Seeing the serious look on All Might's face and the large powerful energies he's feeling, Goku flies right behind the hero. That's when Izuku remembers that one of his friends, Ida, has a work study there. Just to be sure, the teen tried to sense his friend's energy, but he wasn't getting a single read on him. Not even a minor energy source of Ida's is sensible, and this worries Izuku. What even has him worried though are the Haikai signatures all over Hasu, and it feels similar to the Namu he fought at the USJ, but defiantly more powerful. Everyone can see the worry on his face. Momo asks Izuku, Hey, what's wrong? Are you okay? You look scared. Izuku responds, It's Ida, his course study was in Hasu. I'm trying to sense his energy but I can't find anything. It could be because he's far away and doesn't have high spiritual power, but still, I should be able to get a read on him. It's not like he's in space. Iraraka chimed in and said, if he's doing his work study, then he should be fine since he's with a hero. I don't even know if that's the case. Now that I think about it, Hasu was the area Ida's brother was attacked by the hero killer. Without a second thought, Izuku uses instant transmission to one of the high energy sources. Not before Momo grabs onto the boy, teleporting with him. They both end up in Hasu. Izuku teleports to a high-energy signature to see that it was a very powerful Nama and its power felt stronger than the one at the USJ. The Nama was going to land a devastating punch toward the two. The boy is a lot stronger, but he was surprised he was pushed back. The pain was only momentary, but it soon faded away until they then jumped towards the two, like a massive Hulk smash which causes the ground to crack like an earthquake. But Izuku grabbed the girl and flew to a nearby building before the attack landed. Why would you do that? You could have gotten yourself hurt or even killed. Izuku strictly tells the girl, I'm going to be a hero too. Getting hurt or killed is part of the risk. Momo says as she huffs, All right Momo, let me stop this Namu first. Izuku blitzed off to fight the creature. The Namu was strong, which had the boy worried. Izuku was landing blows that did damage. But it seemed like this Namu had some of the same abilities as the first one, plus more. When he uses one for all, the odds were seemingly in the boy's favor but when the creature got beat down, all of its wounds started regenerating and Izuku felt the power of the creature increase tenfold when it finished regenerating, coming close to matching Izuku in base. This freaks the boy out as these gnomus aren't the same as the one he first fought. Even its energy feels odd, but there was something that was familiar. While Izuku was in his thoughts, processing everything, the Namu grabbed onto Izuku and threw him into a couple of buildings. Goku and All Might appeared to help the boy as they flew to Hasu. 
All Might saw Izuku got launched so he went to check up on him. Izuku saw All Might but the boy quickly got back up to fight the Namu until Goku used a Kamehameha and destroyed the first top half of the creature. It soon regenerated as it shocked Goku, the scene giving him deja vu. Its power increased even larger than before, surprising everyone, even Goku. It hasn't even come close to eclipsing reaching a fraction of Goku's base power, but it was still significant nonetheless. The only being that might be able to defeat that specific Namu is Goku. The Namu then starts to fight Goku, launching a massive mouth beam at the Saiyan. He was surprised to see other beings use Kai, even if the Namu is just using a raw, uncontrolled form of it. While Goku is fighting the Namu, another Namu came in to fight All Might. This one wasn't nearly as strong as the other one but it was strong enough to deal some damage to the hero. Without a second though, All Might activated the Kaioken and started fighting with it. The menace known as Shigaraki is laughing maniacally while holding onto his reattached arm that Izuku cut off at the USJ. He is happy that some of the doctor's new Super Namu haven't disappointed whatsoever. Even some of the new Mega Namus which are weaker than the Super Ones are also powerful in their own right. Shigaraki tells Kurajiri, look at this Kurajiri, isn't this amazing? All this chaos and destruction, I love it. Shigaraki tells Kurajiri to wrap him to the ground as the menace cackles maniacally while frolicking in the vast chaos. Seeing Goku fight the Numo, Izuku speed blitz toward Momo so he can check on her. Hey Momo, are you alright? Yes Izuku, I'm safe. Are you okay though? That creature hit you pretty hard. Momo asked Izuku. Izuku tells her, yeah I'm fine. I'm just surprised that thing is so powerful. But it seems like Goku is handling it, so I'm going to look for Ida. Alright then, I'm coming with you, we will do this together. No Momo, I can't let you come with me. If anything were to happen, especially to you, then I… That's when Momo interrupts him by kissing Izuku. This shocked the boy as he didn't expect it but wasn't stopping it either, only embracing it as he puts his right hand on her lower back and left on her upper neck so he can pull the girl closer to him while kissing her back. Momo was the first to let go of the kiss and said, well then, think about it from my perspective, if anything were to happen to you, then I wouldn't do what I would do myself, so let's go find Ida, together. Izuku feels the weight of the moment. The only thing he can say is the girl's name, his voice being barely audible. Hearing this put a thump in Izuku's chest as he grabs her and rushes off to look for the speedster. While All Might was fighting his Namu, he shouts to Goku, Goku, stop holding back. These creatures aren't the same as I first thought. They will destroy the whole city if they are still loose. These creatures aren't alive so we can put them down for good. Understanding the gravity of the situation Goku quits holding back and launches a Kamehameha at the Namu. The singe and burn scars are preventing the Namu from regenerating its wounds. The Namu that All Might was fighting started to clone itself repeatedly with one of its quirks and they all jumped All Might. So Goku stepped in to help, with less difficulty this time because this Namu is physically weaker than the other. Eraser Head felt what was going on and using instant transmission. He sensed All Might and Goku's energy there and teleported to them. With the help of Goku and Aizawa, they defeat the Namu and its clones with ease, mostly because the Saiyan was there to help. After defeating those two Namus, the three go out to try to help anyone they can and defeat any villains and monsters. Goku has a thought in his mind though. He wonders what would have happened if he allowed that Namu to live. He was curious on how strong it could have gotten with its Senkai-like ability. Back at the beach, Bakugo pulls out his phone to set the location to Hasu. He was about to head off when Kirishima stopped him and asked, Yo Bakugo, where are you going? I'm going to help the nerd, Bakugo tells the redhead. But you can't, we aren't heroes so we can't step in, Kirishima tells the blonde. Bakugo pulls out his temporary hero license he received from All Might and said, I may not be a hero yet but I'm a temporary hero, and even if I wasn't, who the fuck is going to stop me? I don't know if you guys can sense what's going on, but I can, and it's not good at all. Bakugo in a hurry flew all the way to Hasu to see what was going on, and a bunch of very powerful Namu. There are some even more powerful than the Namu he fought at the USJ, but it looks like Goku, All Might, and Aizawa are there and already handling those creatures. It looks like the city has been devastated, buildings were destroyed, and fires were everywhere. People are freaking out and some even looting. It's mayhem, fallen heroes, many casualties, fires everywhere, and buildings falling apart. The blonde isn't sure what to do. He flies down to try to help anyone he can while trying to find Izuku and Ida. Bakugo looks continues to look around until he saw Izuku and Momo. He could only see them from the back but he saw that Izuku was kneeling on the floor, holding onto his knees to support his upper body from falling in shock from the sight he was looking at. The blonde walks up to the two to see what they were looking at Ida's lifeless body. Then he turns to see the dead hero, Native. Bakugo could see the pool of blood coming out of Ida's stab wound as it spreads, getting blood on Izuku's pants. Despite that, the greenette doesn't move it, his pants soaking up the blood, uncontrollably crying while muttering, Ida, Ida, I'm sorry. No, please no. I was too late to come and save you. 
I'm sorry. He keeps on repeating that mantra continuously Izuku is just uncontrollably crying and Momo is tearing up too. Even Bakugo was saddened by the scene. He was never friends with the speedster, but he never wanted anything bad to happen to him either. The tears from Izuku's eyes stopped falling as his mind couldn't handle what was going on. And that's when these black tendrils came out of the green-haired boy and started going crazy. Izuku was losing control and causing so much damage. Bakugo quickly grabbed Momo and Ida's dead body to move them to the side. The blonde tries to grab onto Izuku's arms where the whips are coming out. With his Max Kaiken, Bakugo repeatedly headbutts the boy with his Max Kaioken until he eventually knocks Izuku out completely cold. This was a pretty hard feat to do since Izuku is more durable. But no matter how durable a person can be, if the brain is being knocked back and forth, it could knock him out or give him a concussion. This causes the black whips to go back into him. Both Bakugo and Momo were wondering what happened to the boy and what power he was using. Until they both hear metal being dragged across the pavement but then the sound stopped. Bakugo had a feeling that this could be Ida's killer. The blonde tried to sense any other presence there. He doesn't rush into the situation because he feels like there is something wrong and sinister. Bakugo knows he's powerful. But how menacing this energy feels, it even has the boy taken back. This power that Bakugo is feeling isn't strong compared to him, but that bloodlust is off the charts. Bakugo turns to Momo and tells her, Listen Ponytail, you stay here and watch over the nerd. Try to call All Might or anyone. I'm going to avenge four eyes. No Bakugo, you can't go alone. You don't know who or what's out there. Izuku even had some issues fighting the creatures here. After listening to the girl, the blonde heads out anyways. He knows that if he doesn't act now, then Ida's killer will get away. Bakugo rushes back into the alleyway where he saw the dead hero and Ida. He again tries to sense that malicious energy but it was starting to fade away. Assuming the villain is trying to make a break for it, Bakugo uses his senses to try to track the source until he sees a red figure. The Pomeranian sees how fast the killer is going which even surprises him. This guy had a stronger life force than most normal people. This guy is dashing really fast but he is nowhere comparable to Bakugo's speed. He sees the figure jumping from rooftop to rooftop. But Bakugo ends up appearing out of nowhere, right in front of the villain, and decked him in the face, sending him falling to the ground, right before catching him halfway down, and then drops him so Bakugo doesn't accidentally kill him. Bakugo jumped on Stain and pinned his arms to the ground, holding him tight so he doesn't move. You, it was you that killed that hero in four eyes. The hero killer, Stain. Yeah, so what if I did? Fakers like them deserve to die. They dare call themselves heroes and yet they had intent to kill me. That kid with the tin suit wanted revenge for his brother. How can he call himself a hero when he sought me out to kill me? He deserved what he got. This pissed Bakugo off as he was going to do something. What are you going to do kid? Kill me too. All you fakers are the same. Stain uses a hidden shoe knife and tried to revert his position in order to cut Bakugo. The blonde wasn't expecting it but was able to move out of the way. Not wanting to take risks for whatever quirk Stain had. No you worthless trash, I'm not going to fucking kill you because that's not going to bring him back, but you know what I will do. Bakugo looks at his clothes and sees Ida's blood from earlier when he had to get his body and Momo to safety. The blonde takes his hand and wipes it on the blood. I'm going to stain you with the crimson liquid that you caused to fall from four eyes so you can remember this moment for the rest of your pathetic pitiful existence while you rot in an empty cube box with a straight jacket for the rest of your miserable life. Bakugo pumbles Stain by staining him with the blood of Ida to the point where he's almost unrecognizable. The blonde wanted to let loose for what Stain did but he didn't want to be just as bad as the hero killer. Stain was shocked by the whole experience and was surprised that Bakugo didn't kill him. Stain wasn't going to give up. He tried to pick himself back up. Bakugo wasn't even going to stop him this time around. He throws a knife towards the blonde but he dodges. Then Stain cups his hands together. Seeing this surprised Bakugo as this was a familiar sight. That's when Stain launches a Kamehameha. Stain launched the beam towards Bakugo slapped the energy blast away hey jack off. How in the hell did you learn to do that? Ever since I saw All Might start showing off new abilities after that Goku guy came along. I knew I had to figure it out for myself as the greatest hero started learning these things from his greatest ally. Then I saw you and the green haired kid use these abilities during the sports festival so I knew I could learn it for myself. The world is changing. Soon enough the fake heroes will use these abilities to further their selfishness and desires and not just them, quirkless people too. I don't have a problem with it, but it's just going to add more fakers and trash on the streets pal. For every fake hero that appears, I will take them out. Just like your blue haired friend with the armor. But you, you aren't like the rest and you aren't like your friend I killed. You show off a tough bravado but I can tell you have the potential to be a real hero. Stain says menacingly while giving a freaky smile. Hearing this angered Bakugo. Just shut up. I don't give a fuck about your stupid bullshit. What you say means nothing to me. 
Back Hugo says as he knocked out Stain Cold. Now no one's blood will have to be stained on the streets by your blade since you'll be locked up for hopefully forever you worthless trash. Back Hugo says as he spits on the hero killer's unconscious body. While dragging onto Stain, he goes to look for Momo and Izuku. Back Hugo finds them and approaches them and drops Stain's unconscious body at a safe distance. Are you doing alright Ponytail? Back Hugo asks the girl while mourning the loss of a friend and holding on to Izuku's unconscious body. Me and Ida, we weren't as close he was to Izuku and Yuraraka, but he was still my friend. She says to the blonde while tears are dropping from her eyes. Were you able to contact anyone? Back Hugo asked calmingly. I contacted Aizawa Sensei. He was able to answer. He should be here any moment. A few minutes later, Aizawa appeared using instant transmission. After he arrived, he saw Ida's lifeless body and an unconscious Izuku. His eyes filled with worry as he rushed to the group. Aizawa asked the two, are you guys okay? What happened here? Back Hugo explains what just happened as the eraser hero stares at Stain's unconscious body. The hero goes to tend over Izuku and Ida. Aizawa tried to sense Ida's life force but when he can't sense it, he checks his pulse. Confirming that there was no pulse, a heavy feeling in his heart appeared, but he keeps his composure for his student's sake. Back Hugo clenches his fists in anger for the fallen boy. Izuku soon woke back up from unconsciousness he barely remembered what was going on until he saw Ida's body. And that's when everything came flooding back. The boy starts to cry. Momo helps Izuku up and moves him away from Ida. Aizawa went to check on the boy to see if there he could have a concussion. As the hero was checking on the boy, he is feeling grief for Ida's death and guilt for not being able to help him in time. The racer felt that as his teacher, he is also responsible for the death of Ida since he feels like he should have known that the blue-haired boy would pick a course study where Stain almost killed his brother. Aizawa sees the grief on the boy so he tries to reassure him. It's not your fault Izuku. With tears still falling, Izuku tells his teacher, Aizawa sensei, we have to make sure something like this never happens again. Ida didn't deserve this. No one does. Aizawa nodded and agrees. You're right Midoriya. We will do whatever we can. But as of right now, we need to ensure everyone's safety and help assist in the chaos happening. Izuku wipes away his tears so he can get ready for whatever he has to face. The three come up with a plan to evacuate as many people as possible while trying to also assist other pro heroes in defeating any villains or namus. And helping as many people as possible. Even with the grief of Ida's death. They know that they can't allow their emotions to hinder their actions, even a little bit. Before they leave, Aizawa sent out a message to any heroes to any near pro heroes, police and medical assistants to take the unconscious body of Stain and Ida's dead body. Meanwhile, Goku and All Might continue to fight any remaining Nomis. With the help of Goku, it becomes very easy as the other Namus weren't as strong as the one Namu Goku fought. Even All Might have an easier time with the other Namus. Shigaraki was disappointed that his super Namu has fallen but is happy with the chaos and destruction destruction that happened within the city caused by his other Namus. This even helped the villain gain some helpful insight for the future. Kirajiri used Warp Gate and they both left. Aizawa, Momo, Bakugo, and Izuku regrouped with Goku and All Might. Bakugo and Izuku assists the heroes while Momo tries get civilians to safety. Things were starting to settle down. Goku and All Might found out about the death of Ida and it affected them deeply. The first two Namus were tough but the rest were easy to handle. There are many casualties and lost lives. Soon enough, things were starting to were starting to settle down. Aizawa, Momo, Bakugo, and Izuku grouped back up and a heavy feeling of loss was weighing everyone. Even Goku was saddened that someone who's young and had potential was fallen. Momo was was holding on to Izuku. When things settled down, he couldn't hold back his feelings anymore as he started crying again. Despite their rivalry, Bakugo put out his hand to reach out and help the boy, but the blonde slowly put it back down, not really knowing what to do himself. He doesn't know how to feel at the moment. Pro-medical heroes and other heroes now try to contain the aftermath. Some time later, Izuku was checked out for any injuries caused by Bakugo when he had to headbutt him unconscious. Momo was there to be there for the boy. Izuku stopped crying but he is still very depressed about the situation. The police came in alongside Bakugo in order to talk to the three about the hero killer, Stain. When they get the story and found out Bakugo defeated Stain, they were about to scold him until he pulled out his temp hero card, given by All Might. The police were made aware that all three had permission to step in and use their powers. Even Momo technically had permission when Eraser had asked them to regroup and help. After everything, Momo and Izuku would end up leaving. But both think about everything they've been through. They both are on front of Izuku's apartment door. Both look at each other with longing sadness as they hug each other. Inko thought she heard something so she opened the door to see both hugging each other with the look of sadness and dread from the both. Hey honey, Momo, are you both okay? The mother asked in worry. She hasn't seen her son cry on a long time so she starts to tear up too. No we're not. Momo responds. We've been through a lot. 
Momo tells Inko what happened as they enter the apartment to talk about things. Inko cries even more when she heard what happened. She doesn't know how to help Izuku with such a situation. When Momo finished her explanation she looks at Izuku and gently puts her hand on her cheek. I should probably get going should I? Inko interrupts. No, you can stay here, especially what you two have been through. Are you sure? I don't want to intrude or anything. Momo reluctantly tells the girl. Inko doesn't give it a second thought. Some time later, Goku and All Might shows up to the Midoriya household. This time, they knock on the door instead of Goku just teleporting inside. To All Might's suggestion, Inko answers the door to see the two and lets them in. They all would console each other through such a tough time. Hello everyone this is the season 2 finale of What If Goku Trained Deku. Honestly is crazy that we even reached a season 2 in the first place and now we are to the end of the season. If you guys have been enjoying the series so far then make sure to destroy the like and subscribe buttons for more videos. Make sure to share and hit the bell notification too. All Might, Goku, and Momo ended up spending the night at the Midoriya household. They all woke up to Inko making breakfast for them. The feeling of loss was still weighing on everybody but the smell of Inko's cooking made them feel a little better. Good morning everyone. Don't mind me. Food will be ready in a bit. Goku can't help but stare while Inko is cooking. All Might checks his phone to see a school email from Principal Nezu. In the email, it was announced that course studies would be cancelled and classes will resume after a week due to the Hasu incident. Momo and Izuku looked at their phones to see the same email as well. Inko finishes cooking and everyone eats. Goku scarfs down whatever he can, but Izuku is only eating a little. Momo and Inko see this and they are worried for the boy. All Might is enjoying his breakfast and thanks Inko for her generosity. After they finish eating, All Might tells Goku that they have to leave to discuss things with Yue about the whole situation. But before All Might leaves, he pulls Izuku and Momo to the side and says, Listen young Midoriya and young Yeyurazu. I understand how sad it is to lose a friend. As a hero, I've lost many people I cared about over the years. It's tragic that we lost young Ida, but his memory will always stay with us. He will never be forgotten, and his death will not go in vain. As heroes, we must stay strong and pull through for the sake of others. We must continue on to protect everyone with a smile. Hearing this struck a chord with a two. It even made Goku smile hearing that speech. Izuku is still sad but he understands what the hero is saying. Before Goku and All Might leave, Izuku tells them that he wants to talk about a weird dream he had during the night. All Might tells him that they can discuss it later in the day. Momo knows she would have to leave and go home soon so her family wouldn't get worried. Hey Izuku, I think it's about time that I get going. I don't want my folks to worry. I understand. I hope to see you soon Momo. Momo gives Izuku a kiss and then flies off, leaving the boy blushing. Inko was spying in the corner and was in glee to see that. Meanwhile, with Goku and All Might. There was a discussion amongst the heroes in the UA facility. There are news reporters asking the heroes many questions. Some even asked about the explosive blonde who defeated the hero killer, Stain. There was even discussion about the death of Tenya Ida. However, the hero who Ida was studying under, Manuel, took responsibility for his death and will have to deal with the consequences. Many reporters even asked about the destruction of Hasu and the loss of many heroes with many casualties. Stain is held prisoner. All Might had special precautions set for his incarceration when he found out that Stain managed to learn how to use Kai on his own. Since Bakugo had a temporary hero license given by All Might, he was given credit for the defeat of the hero killer. There are news reports and articles about it, establishing Bakugo as a potential future hero. His credibility and popularity skyrocketed through the roof. After dealing with all that, Principal Nezu plans to set an announcement to honor the life of Ida. Before doing all that, Nezu pulls Goku and All Might to the side to discuss Goku's future role in UA. All right Goku, I think you would be perfect as a PE teacher. I will make it a mandatory class for classes 1A and 1B. All Might will assist you in teaching. Nezu made Goku's official role as the school's PE and spiritual expert teacher. Goku was happy to be given an opportunity to teach this world's most promising students. Nezu wants to know how Goku will be training the students, so he asks. Goku tells him about his childhood training and then expands on every other teaching he learned throughout his lifetime. Hearing his story shocked Nezu, as he wasn't expecting all that, but was delighted by the thought. Goku doesn't plan on rushing the students. He wants to develop their strengths and techniques before teaching them about spiritual control. Nezu understands, so he has accommodations set for whatever Goku needs. Throughout the week, all of Class 1 would mourn the loss of Ida. Momo and Izuku became a lot closer. 
and they comforted each other throughout the week. Pak Hugo mainly trains during this time until he has to return to school. Upon examining his temporary hero license, he sees that it's going to expire by the end of the week, so he takes advantage of this chance to train freely with his quirk. Pak Hugo goes to the beach to train. No one else was there, so he lets loose freely. Pak Hugo wanted to create a new technique that uses his quirk in conjunction with his kai. He wants to create the AP Scatter Bomb, a technique that uses Pak Hugo's sweat as he heats up his body with his kai, causing him to sweat more. When he does that, he figures that he would trap the sweat in a thick kai bubble without igniting it. This is taking him a lot of concentration as he needs to have precise control to maintain the bubble. But the first attempt failed and blew up on his face, literally. Before he tries again, Pak Hugo powers up, his orange energy surrounding him as the crackling energy causes his sweat to spark around him. Determined, he gives the technique another attempt. After the second attempt, he managed to hold the Kai bubble infused with his sweat. Now he has to create multiple, which is going to be the hardest part. While training, Pak Hugo gets spotted by a passerby. The passerby recognizes the blonde from the news reports and articles about the defeat of the hero killer. Soon enough more people came around and started bothering him. Not wanting to blow up on their faces, he flies away. Momo and Izuku could eventually visit Ida's grave as his family held a private ceremony for the funeral. Goku and All Might would soon join in, using instant transmission to teleport to Izuku's energy signature. They all honor the fallen speedster as Izuku vows to prevent such a thing from happening again to anyone else. After visiting Ida's grave, Izuku has a private conversation with All Might about the dream he had. He told him that he met a former user of One for All and how we have awakened a new power. All Might was shocked to hear this. The hero knows about the vestiges, but unlocking new power is a surprise to him. There was another thing that Izuku wanted to talk to All Might about. Izuku looked to the hero and asked him, Hey All Might, I wanted to know if it's alright if I tell Momo about One for All. We've been getting a lot closer and I don't want there to be any secrets between us. This had All Might intrigued. What do you mean young Midoriya? Are you two dating now? Izuku's face turned red. No, but I think things are getting there. It's just losing Ida put a lot of pause on things in my life and I needed the time to process it. Now, I want to get closer to Momo and ask her to be my girlfriend and if things are official, then it's better to not have secrets between us. All Might looks at him, putting his hand on his shoulder. I understand, since this is now your power, I believe it's a decision only you get to make, and I will trust your judgment. If you think that young Yeyurazu should know, then you have my blessing. But you should know, danger tends to follow anyone who knows this secret. That's when All Might thinks to himself that he should tell the boy the truth about one for all and all for one. He decides he will tell him some other time, though. Izuku wanted to know what the hero meant but he didn't press it. All Might pulled out his wallet and gives Izuku around 20,000 yen. If you're going to ask her to be your girlfriend, then you should take young Yeyurazu somewhere nice. All Might, you can't just keep giving me a lot of money. Why not? Do something nice for that girl. Take her somewhere fun before school starts. All Might gave the money to Izuku, forcing him to take it. On the Sunday before school started, Izuku remembered the money that All Might gave him so he decided to take his advice and take Momo out somewhere to officially ask her to be his girlfriend. He thinks back to when they first kissed. Even though the day was tragic, he thought at least something good came of it. Izuku pulls out his phone and texts Momo if she wants to go out somewhere. Momo responds with a thumbs up and a smile emoji. Izuku would give her the address to meet up at and they would get ready to see each other. The Greenette uses instant transmission and teleports to the girl. Izuku greets Momo and they head into the amusement park. They both have a good time and having fun like this helps them deal with their loss. As they explore the part, both Izuku and Momo enjoy the rides, games, and food. With the money from All Might, they were able to do many things. While strolling through the park, Izuku finds a quiet spot away from the crowds. It was facing the sunset. Izuku looks into Momo's eyes and tells her, Momo, I really enjoyed our time together. You mean a lot to me, and I can't imagine going through any of this without you by my side. Momo's heart starts to flutter as she knows where this might be going. Momo will you be my girlfriend? Momo responds by hugging Izuku and giving him a kiss. It was about time that everyone returned to school as Nezu gave everyone the week off after the Hasu incident and Ida's death. Izuku was getting ready for school. And then he uses instant transmission to teleport to Momo. The two were happy to see each other as they greeted each other with a hug and kiss. They both fly to the school and land on campus. That's when Izuku uses this opportunity to give Momo the talk so he looks for a quiet corner away from prying ears. So Momo, there is something important I should tell you about, Izuku said with his heart pounding in nervousness. The girl looked at him with concern. What is it, Izuku? He takes a deep breath and explains everything about one for all. He told her how he received the power from All Might and how he used to be quirkless. Izuku even went into detail about Goku's origins and how they met. Hearing this shocked the girl, but it felt like a lot of things made sense now. 
As Izuku went into detail, Momo just kept on listening, her expressions shifting from surprise to understanding. Momo tells Izuku, Thank you for telling me the truth. I'm honored that you have enough trust in me to share such a secret. Of course, you're my girlfriend now after all. Hearing that made Momo happy. Oh, so you said it, Momo said, teasing the boy, causing him to blush. They both would soon head into their classes when the bell rings. When Yuraka saw Momo and Izuku holding hands, she felt sad, but couldn't help but feel happy for two. Maybe it's just a way to push away her sadness about a loss of a friend and now a loss of a potential partner she had a crush on. Yuraka would go up to the two, holding hands huh? Does it mean what I think it means? She asks while giving a slight smile. Izuku gets flustered and tells and confirms it. She congratulates the two, trying to be positive. Some of the more caring students came up to Momo, Izuku, and Yuraka to comfort them since they were closer to Ida. When Bakugo made his way in, all the students turned to look at him since they all heard in the news that the blonde was the one who defeated Stain. There has even been leaked cell phone footage of someone recording the fight between Bakugo and Stain, causing the whole world to hear what the hero killer said about Kai, Goku, and All Might. There was another surprise that came a shock to everyone. A new student came in to take Ida's place, and that student was Hitoshi Shinzo. Everyone was surprised to see him. Izuku went up to him and congratulated him for getting into their class. Shinzo didn't like that he was there to fill in an empty spot, but took his seat anyways. Before all the classes start, Principal Nezu made a morning announcement to honor the fallen student, Tenya Ida. Soon enough class get started and they go about their basic courses. It was until the final classes when both Class 1A and Class 1B make their way to the school gym. Both classes were confused about why they were there, but that's when their new teacher would come in and make his way in. It was Yue. S. New P.E. Teacher, Son Goku, Principal Nezu and All Might came right in after, introducing Goku to all the students. Kirishima, Shinzo, Yuraka, and Todoroki were stoked to see Goku again. Izuku was confused about this development because no one has mentioned this to him but is happy to see his master working there. Goku greeted everyone with a smile. Nezu introduced Goku to the class as the school's new P.E. Teacher and spiritual expert. Goku expressed his excitement to train the next generation of heroes. The Saiyan tells all the students to grab a turtle shell that weighs 50 pounds, all provided by Nezu. Goku tells them that they will wear those every day when they come into his class to train. Izuku and Bakugo don't have to do this since they already have experience so instead, they can either assist or work on their own thing. Momo gives Izuku a worried and scared look, but Izuku gives her a kiss on the cheek and says, Good luck, you're gonna need it. Momo huffs. All Might whacks Izuku in the head and shouts out loud. No PDA on school grounds. Goku has all of class 1 and 1B basically run a marathon while wearing those turtle shells. All the students' faces turn from shock to genuine concern for themselves. While they are running, Bakugo decides he wants to work on his new technique, the AP Scatter Bomb. Bakugo figured out the first part of the technique but he's having a hard time creating multiple at once. So until he figures out how to create multiple, he dubs it, the AP Bomb. The Saiyan sees Bakugo working on the technique so he asks him about it. Yo Bakugo, what is that technique you are trying to work on? It doesn't look like anything I've taught you before. Bakugo looks at Goku and says, Yeah, it's something I'm trying to make on my own, but I'm having some damn trouble. I find it hard to keep the concentration to hold multiple of these Kai bubbles with my sweat inside it as a simple mistake could ignite the sweat and potentially blow up on my face. And when I try to create multiple, I would have to sweat more which will eventually cause me to dehydrate if I overheat and sweat too much. Um, what does dehydrate mean? Goku asks, this question had Bakugo baffled. You've got to be fucking kidding me. It means I will get too thirsty and pass out if I sweat too much. That's when Goku understands. So Goku gives Bakugo some advice. I think I got an idea. Instead of trying to create multiple at once, use one at a time. Bakugo listens to what Goku has to say. Goku then asks, those gauntlet things that you use, do you use it to keep your sweat? Bakugo confirms this so Goku tells him. Maybe when you store enough sweat, you can create multiple at once, but you will have to learn to keep your focus on your own. Try to meditate to help you. Bakugo goes to get his gauntlets. He takes Goku's advice and gives it a shot. He spends some time meditating, focusing on his breath and clearing his mind. As he sweats into his gauntlets, he concentrates his energy around his sweat without igniting it. He then realizes he should get special accommodations made for his gauntlets to make this technique more effective. Izuku sees Bakugo working on a new technique and the Greenette decides he should understand the new power he unlocked better. He hasn't had a chance to use it since Ida died, but he knows he will have to figure out this power eventually. The boy feels like the best option is to talk to the vestige he met before to learn about Black Whip, so he gets into a meditative state and tries to reach into his inner consciousness and into the vestige realm. 
While Bakugo and Izuku are doing their own thing, Goku pushes the rest of Class 1A and 1B to their limits. After their runs, Goku told them that they will be swimming laps at the beach. This had all the students excited. Nezu knew about this so he had swimwear ready for all the students. Once they all went to the locker rooms to change and came back out, Goku asked everyone to huddle up to him so he can transport everyone there. All Might goes along to keep a safe eye on the students. Bakugo and Izuku stay behind at the school to continue doing their own thing. Once there, Goku had them swim laps around. They were even more shocked because they are already sore from the running and they had to keep wearing the turtle shells. Everyone felt like they were in hell. Even Kirishima, Momo, Yuraka, Todoroki, and Shinzo were surprised to go through what Izuku had to go through. All the other students want to know when they can learn to shoot cool energy blasts like Bakugo and Izuku. Goku tells them that they will learn it soon but they should strengthen their bodies and hone their techniques first. After they finish swimming, Goku lets them take a break and relax. All the students were extremely sore and had a hard time moving around. When an hour has passed, Goku sees that everyone is still unable to move so the Saiyan had to change his plans. Goku wanted to get everyone to partner up and show everyone martial arts, but he decides to allow them to watch as he demonstrates the moves they will eventually learn. The class would soon end as Goku would take everyone back using instant transmission. They would have lunch. During lunch, Goku saw Izuku sitting with Momo so he joined them, bringing his ungodly amount of food he has with him. Yuraka joins the table also. She still seems sad about Ida. Goku seeing the sadness on her face offers her a chicken leg to try to cheer her up. The girl was weirded out by the offer but seeing the innocent smile on Goku's face, she grabs it. Then the Saiyan continues to scarf down his lunch. After lunch, class 1 and 1B head to their next classes where they do their basic hero training. But Goku requires them to wear the turtle shells outside of his class. Soon enough in his next classes, he would include martial arts to improve everyone's fighting techniques. Principal Nezu was impressed by Goku's intense teachings so the bear creature comes up with an idea for a course lesson he has planned for all the students. When the school day ends, All Might tells Izuku to come into the teacher's lounge so he can tell him the full truth about One for All. Goku was there. He was bored since there was nothing else going on and wanted fight villains to cure his boredom so he leaves to do that. Izuku didn't know what he was there for so the hero tells him. I want to go into more detail about the truth of One for All. As you may know, it's a quirk passed down from generation to generation, but you should know its full origin. The quirk derived from another power called All for One. It can steal quirks and gives those quirks to others. Hearing this shocked Izuku and had him worried. All Might went into more detail. This was around the time when quirks started showing up. Before society knew how to deal with superpowers. When quirks first appeared, it was hard to dictate the normal from the abnormal, so society halted. Izuku remembered hearing something about that before. That's when All Might talks about all for one and the things he's done. Izuku heard the rumors but was unsure because he assumed it was fake news. The Greenette wanted to know how it's tied to one for all though, so the hero tells him. Remember when I told you that he can give powers to others? The sick bastard had a younger brother who was sickly and was thought to be quirkless, but he had a strong sense of justice. He hated what his brother was doing so the younger brother resisted the older brother's tyranny. And then all for one transferred a quirk to his younger brother. A quirk that allowed him to stockpile power. Even though everyone thought the younger brother was quirkless, it turned out he did have a power. A useless power that allowed him to transfer his own power. So those two powers merged and that's how one for all came to be. This had Izuku in full-blown shock. He understands the story but doesn't know why he is bring him up now since he should be old or dead. But All Might explains that he might have a quirk that prevents him from aging or increases his lifespan. The hero pours this burden onto Izuku, but the boy understands as he believes All Might will have his back. Izuku then leaves to hang out with Momo. All Might is worried as he believes he won't have a future, but he thinks back to what Goku said and hopes what the Saiyan said comes true. It's another day at school and all the students are worried about their midterms and the practical exam. Aizawa also tells them about the training camp and that if they fail, then they could not go. Momo ends up setting up a study session, making more friends with the students. She gets excited to have others over. Izuku, Momo, Yuraka, Todoroki, Toru Hagakure, and Tsuyu Asui were eating lunch and discussing the written and practical exams. Goku sees Izuku sitting so he joins them with his large amounts of food he brought with him. The Saiyan says he can't wait to see them for his PE class to do some more training. Everyone except Izuku looked scared because Goku's training is tough. While they were enjoying their lunch break, the douche nozzler known as Nito Monoma made his way in and started talking shit. He brought up the hero killer incident and how they do things for attention and then he mocked Ida's death. Hearing this angered Momo, Yuraka, and Todoroki. Yuraka and Todoroki were about to sock Monoma but his classmate, Itsuka Kendo, whacked Monoma with her quirk and scolded him. She then apologized to the group. To make amends, Kendo provides information about the exam. 
telling them it's similar to the entrance exams with robots, but they soon come to find out that's not the case. Class 1A finds out it's students versus teachers. Izuku had a new hero suit made for him, a version of his suit that gives memento to Goku. The first round of the practical is Kirishima and Todoroki vs. Cementos. Kirishima was punching and flying through the cement created by the hero the best he could. Todoroki was flying around and evading each pillar heading towards his direction. With the training they both have been doing in Goku's P class, Kirishima was able to break through more cement, realizing that punching through isn't going to do anything. They both decide it was best to fly away and escape since no matter what direction they try to go, Cementos will just keep creating more cement to protect himself. Kirishima and Todoroki win this round. The second round was Asui and Takoyami vs. Ectoplasm. That match goes about the same as Takoyami and Asui passed. The third match was Anjiro and Sato vs. Power Loader. With all the traps that Power Loader had, it was hard for them to get out or go against the hero due to all the traps. With only one hope left, Sato pulls out a candy bar and eats it. He bulks out and without warning, he grabs Anjiro by the tail and swings him across towards the exit with all his strength. This caught Anjiro off guard but he used this opportunity to keep his balance. He was so close to the finish line that when Ajiro reaches the ground, he uses his tail to give himself a jump boost and one for himself and his teammate. The fourth match was between Momo and Shinzo versus Eraser Head. Since Aizawa is hella overpowered these days, Momo tries to come up with a plan to defeat the fake villain. Also, since he's powerful now, Nezu used his funds to get power suppressant bands made with the help of the UA. As support core students, those intelligent nerds with the help of Nezu managed to create such things. It will divide his power by threefold. During the week she had off since the course studies were cancelled, Momo has been training with Goku to learn some techniques, but she hopes to capture Aizawa first instead of resorting to it. Shinzo agrees since he believes it's his best shot at defeating the Eraser villain. During Shinzo's free time, he's been working on his energy control and hopes it will come into use. But since Eraser Head is hella overpowered now, he just senses the two and uses instant transmission to teleport right in front of the two. Aizawa uses his quirk to prevent them from using theirs. But before the fake villain showed up, Momo created smoke bombs and used them to obstruct his vision. Shinzo assists Momo by launching a Kai Blast at the Eraser villain after Momo dropped the bomb. Momo made Shinzo a respirator for her next plan. Aizawa was still able to get them though because he can still sense their Kai. During the week off, Momo asked Goku if there were any techniques she can learn. She wanted to know any techniques that she could master. Since seeing Ida and visiting him at his grave, Momo wants to be prepared for anything that comes her way. So Goku tells her about all the abilities he has seen over the years from his friends and foes. There were two people that piqued her interest. Piccolo and Tain Shinhin. Two people who were evil became good, but she was also interested in some of their techniques. Goku never used these abilities before but he's seen how they work so he tries his best to teach the girl. Meanwhile, in the present, Momo uses a version of the multi-form technique. This caught Aizawa off guard as no one was expecting multiple Momos. She created five clones. The downside is that it divides her power, but the girl doesn't mind that disadvantage since she has a plan. Each of the clones are still able to use Momo's creation quirk so creates another set of smoke bombs, but some of them have the same mist properties as Midnight's quirk. Momo told Shinzo to create multiple Kai balls and have them aimed at Aizawa. Momo then gave Shinzo the smoke bombs without the Eraser villain seeing them. Shinzo threw all the energy balls at him but Eraser head just smacked it away with ease. But then Shinzo threw the smoke bombs. Aizawa not realizing some of the smoke bombs are not real, allows him to use them since he believes that he can just sense her energy with ease. Aizawa fell into their trap. He tried to get away when he noticed the smoke looked funny but it was already too late as he breathed in the mist. Not wanting to take any chances, Shinso and Momo fly out of dodge and dip through the exit. Not before Shinso wraps up Aizawa with the same wrap that Momo made for him to use, and they won their match. Izuku was impressed and congratulated the two. The fifth match was Ioma and Yuraka vs. 13. Things go about the same as in canon, but they both have a stronger grip on the post while being sucked up by 13 since their P training. Ioma tries to launch a laser blast while Yuraka tries to blast a Kai beam towards her, but the space villain sucks it up with her black hole quirk. While they were struggling, Ayama tells her how he's sorry for the loss of her friend, Ida, and how Izuku is now taken by Momo Yeirazu. This caught Yuraka off guard as she lets go but uses this opportunity to try to kick 13 dodges, but Yuraka flies right behind her and cuffs her. Their team won, but hearing that from Ioma causes the girl to think about things. After the match, Ioma tells Yuraka that there are plenty of fish in the sea and she shouldn't let it hold her back. The sixth match is Minta and Mina vs. Principal Nezu. That shit practically goes the same. Nezu is having the time of his life. They lost no diff. The seventh match was present Mike vs. Koda and Gyro. That also goes the same as they won by escaping. 
Same thing with the 8th match with Hagakure and Soji vs Snipe as they won. The 8th match was Kaminari and Siro vs Midnight. She has Kaminari tossed out as Siro tried to save him, but not wanting to breathe in the mist, he had no choice but to escape. Siro tries to come up with a plan to save Kaminari, but his only chance is to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the R-rated villain. While trying to come up with a plan, Midnight decided he had enough of waiting and finds Siro. TR-rated villain tried to whip Siro while spreading her pheromones, but the tape hero used his own tape on his nose and mouth. Siro then uses his tapes to bind Midnight as he looks for Kaminari and makes a break for it. They won the match. The final match was between Izuku and Bekugo versus Goku. The Saiyan decided since he was going to pretend to be a bad guy. He wants to fully play the part. He thought of two people, Goku Black and Turtles, but he decided that Goku Black was the best option. Goku a similar gi made and started laughing maniacally. Nezu had power suppressor bracelets also made for Goku, but these ones power him down way more it did Aizawa. The principal had these special made for the Saiyan as he wanted to bring him down to at least All Might's current base level, which would currently be around 4 million. These suppressors impressed Goku as he feels like he could use them for training purposes. Hello, mortals. Goku says in his best Goku Black accent. This had both Bakugo and Izuku shook as Goku shouts, prepare to die. Goku launches massive Kamehameha that devastated anything coming its way, not worrying about the destruction. Bakugo and Izuku fly out of the way, but they both had to use their quirks to do so. They understand that Goku's power is suppressed, but even suppressed he's still powerful. Even so, Bakugo and Izuku don't want to run. Goku then uses instant transmission and punches Bakugo, sending him flying through buildings. Izuku got worried so he used full cowling and blitz towards Bakugo to check on him. Kachin, are you okay? Bakugo uses his kai to protect him from the force. Yeah, I'm fine, now get the fuck off me Deku. We have more important things to worry about. Currently, Izuku would be around 2 million and Bakugo would be around a 1 million power level so when they fight back, they are taken aback. Goku is happy to enjoy an all-out fight, even if his power is suppressed heavily. Goku with his superior martial arts prowess is able to avoid the two, but when they start working together, the Saiyan starts to have a harder time. Goku flies up to the sky and launches a massive Kamehameha towards the two. While on the ground, both Izuku and Bakugo cup their hands together and launch a massive Texas and AP. Kamehameha that combined together and overtook Goku's. Izuku was in 50% full cowling and Bakugo was using a 9x Kaioken. This forces Goku to transform into Super Saiyan while still wearing the power-suppressing bracelet. All the students and teachers see Goku transform into this beautiful golden aura as the Saiyan roars in excitement. Both Izuku and Bakugo fly up and continue to fight Goku. Izuku is using 100%, which is slightly surpassing Goku's suppressed Super Saiyan state which impresses the Saiyan, but not wanting to finish the battle. He decides to not transform further. While Izuku was fighting Goku, Bakugo was concentrating his energy so he can create the scatter bombs. He creates multiple Kai bubbles with his sweat stored saved from his gauntlets and had them surrounding Goku. Bakugo then detonated all the bombs, with the combination of his sweat, causing the blasts to be more devastating. Goku's clothes started getting burned and then Izuku clocks Goku with a 100% Texas smash a times 2 Kaioken. This caught Goku off guard as it sends him hurtling to the ground. This managed to hurt Goku as both Izuku and Bakugo rushed in and cuffed Goku. Both were annoyed at Goku because they knew Goku had stronger forms, even if heavily suppressed and he could have used them. The Saiyan explains that he wanted to enjoy the match but that just annoyed the boys. Even if they did technically win, the fake city was left in ruins. All the students were astonished by the display of power and were now glad they have Goku as a teacher. They even wonder what Goku's full power is like without being suppressed. The three get healed by the recovery girl. Now it's another day another dollar. All the students are just talking to each other in class and discussing the final exams from before. The ones who failed assumed they couldn't go but when Aizawa came in, he announced that everyone was going. But the ones who failed will be doing extracurricular activities. After school, some of them ended up shopping. Momo and Izuku were holding hands the whole time. Momo goes around and tries to spoil Izuku since she's rich, leaving Yuraka alone to do her own thing. The brunette thinks back to what Ioma said and tries to move forward. While Momo is trying to spoil Izuku rotten, they both get confronted by the menace known as Shigaraki. They didn't recognize him at first, but then he made himself clear to the two. Shigaraki put both his hands around Momo and Izuku's necks. Hey Izuku Midoriya, long time no see. Shigaraki starts leaking his kai to reveal his newfound power to Izuku. As you can see, after all this time, I've managed to learn how to use kai myself, and just like your cheating ass, I managed to find a way to cheat my way to higher power. I won't tell you how though, but here's the thing, I want to talk. If I feel like you make so much as a move against me then I will disintegrate your cute girlfriend of yours. He also threatens to kill a bunch of other innocent people, without any other choice. 
He follows Shigaraki to a spot so they can talk. Their conversation goes about the same until he gets to the topic of the hero killer. Why does everyone care about the fight between Bakugo and the hero killer? The hero killer is just like me but he gets praise for his speech of his. And then he inadvertently gives the world hope when he talked about Kai. Even quirkless people have hope. But he caused pain and chaos, just like me. That's when Izuku gives a similar answer to what he did in canon. This gives Shigaraki a realization. It's all because of Goku. And because of Goku, the world is changing. It all leads to Goku. He's the reason why the symbol of peace is still around. He is the reason why everyone is getting stronger. Shigaraki now believes Goku needs to be taken out of the equation, not just All Might. They both need to be brought down. To Shigaraki, it's not just All Might's fault, it's also Goku's. Hiroraka then comes over and sees what's going on, causing Shigaraki to leave, startling the three. Izuku and Momo would report the innocent to the police and talk to Detective Tsukachu. Goku and All Might talk to the two to see if they were alright. Inko comes in, worried for Izuku. Both he and Momo grab onto Inko and fly home. It freaks out the mother but she sees the beautiful view and starts to enjoy it. That's when Tsukachi and All Might have a similar conversation to Canon, but with Goku there. They are worried for Goku because of what Izuku told them about Shigaraki's conclusion to Goku, but the Saiyan isn't worried one bit. 